Good morning, traders. Are you guys ready to get back into the hot seat? I'm ready. We got a couple of days to trade. It seems like it's been a tax loss sell off as of late. Of course, today, some more indecision. Spy going sideways. Let's see if we get some speeding up here towards the open and maybe nail some trades. Let's talk all about it. Live trading. We got Ryan in the back. Let's get into it. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Those words have been dancing around my head all night. Oh, it's Vegas lore, that phrase. All right, team, let's get it started. Let's take a look into the markets. And of course, bring on Ryan Faluna. How are we doing today? We're doing good. Happy belated birthday, Mitch. Glad to have you back. I think you'll be happy to know that uh, when the adults left yesterday, we didn't burn the house down. We actually <sighs> had a really good show. Uh, Did you break the tables? Day. What's that? Did you break the tables? We broke a few stuff, but I'm going to leave that for you to figure it out because I actually think we put it back together <laughs> and hit it pretty well. So you tell me. If I can. see it. I see it. I know <laughs> how you guys are out there. Uh, but yeah, it seems like you guys had a good time yesterday. Can't blame oh, yeah. you. It looks like you had some special visitors. So shout out to those special visitors. I saw uh, Soldier, right? Soldier Andy, Trades, right? Yep. Andy's, Andy from Mighty Andy Soldiers was, Trades. And yeah, OG and then you also, Trades, who's a strat trader. And we hmm, I think we should have both of them that back. Was they the were person. both excellent. That's what I was wondering for. I didn't I didn't know that other strat trader. So I uh, kind of go ahead and, and learn a little bit. You know, like always, I've had some conversations with different strat traders. And if you guys haven't checked out our trading journeys that we used to do, Ryan, and we'll do another another series. How about? Well, yep, it, sounds it, good. And, and I, do, I do have to say one thing here for uh, Hugo. Congratulations, Argentina football. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So, Ryan over here. With well, our, that special, was, special sound effects. Special sound. We're trying to increase the production of the stream every day, Mitch. I'm taking See cues you. from you since you are See in the lead. You, we're going to try and, and get some stuff. Uh, we're going to try to have even more fun around here. But I got to say, just with that World Cup game, that Argentina final, I, I've been I've watched in sports for a long time. That is single-handedly the best soccer game I have ever watched. It was exciting from start to end. Argentina, obviously a winner, just absolutely amazing. I, 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 this was a great World Cup. This was a lot of fun. Yeah, it wasn't a bad World Cup at all. I think, uh, I, I think I still like it in the summertime a little bit better. Sure, I, I enjoyed it being in the holiday time. You know, it's fun. You know, gave it something to watch on the weekend. But I think that the players would play a little bit better in the summertime than they do in the winter time here. Um, I think like some of the, it, it could have been higher goals scored. Um, if it would have been played in the summertime. But shout out to Argentina. They definitely handled their thing and were able to bring it down. Messi, uh, he did he did what Messi does, right, on the soccer pitch. He normally doesn't play like that in the World Cup, and he was able to finally get it together. Not bad for him. Yeah. I think he retires after this. Um, he shouldn't probably play for too much longer, but it was good to see him celebrate. Now let's get into our celebration of the markets. Of course, we could take a look at what's going on out there in the markets today. Of course, there's still some kind of leaking action going on. And it seems to me like this is a lot of a growth sell-off and a value sell-off. And so that's where it gets a little bit tricky, right? Normally, we've had certain areas where we can go to and be like, well, all right. Well, we can go to like a DE, right? Catch that one. Well, to tell you the truth, that one caught a little bit of a balance the last couple of days, but I feel like today it gets also the takedown. Deals like values doing a pullback, that might be the dip to buy. Growth doing some sell-off, those might be better to short, like a name like Unity. Look how the last couple of days this has come down fast. Of course, these could catch bounces as you get some kind of push, right, oversold condition. But I think that one thing that we'll watch now is – is it an overall just sell-off? I mean, that's what I've been seeing. I haven't been seeing any names hang on. So if you guys are seeing any names hang on, please let me know because it's I'm not seeing it. Uh, let's take a look at XOM. Maybe that's probably where you can see maybe oil not making too big of a move. It's just been going sideways. Eventually, I think this comes towards 100. 
that make, can make its way back. But it's just been on a slow leak here. And the futures don't make me anything excited about oil. But we'll see if we can finally get back above yesterday's high, 106.20. That's what I'd be pointing there on Exxon Mobil. All right, we'll see what else is going on in the market. Um, seems like it's just tough, tough times right now. Basic materials uh, not doing well as of late. It just doesn't seem like there's m much strength here. It's just all weakness, even on an area like healthcare. Um, we still got a nice cross here. I think this is going to be some dips to buy in the next couple of days. So I could see uh, biotechs pulling back uh, like another day or two before we get the bounce. So those can also be looking for shorts. But if there's anything that I'm noting here is that there's shorts for me all around. I don't see really much to go long on unless I'm doing inverse. And of course, I've been on the swing trade on Sark and nailing this one team, still holding on to this one. I just set a stop uh, on Friday before I left. And I said, you know what? If it stops me out on my birthday, it'll stop me out. And if I'm still in it, I'll be probably happy about where I'm at. So on this one, we're still holding on to this position. Uh, this has been from 62, uh, 63.24. Um, so we're at the 66, almost 67 now. So we actually got it on this little move here. And we're making a nice little ride up. We're up about 5.8% on this name. Looking for a little push through 67 towards 70. And that's where I'll get rid of it. And it'd be a hell of a trade there for Sark. We'll see if we can get it up there. And this is, of course, Sark. Um, but I'm going to get out of this. You guys see my outlook overall. And now I'll kick it to my man, Ryan Faluna. Let's take a look. All right. Uh, so first things first here, just walk, going through the chat here. Nick is saying cold is on a run. Remember, cold mm. and boil are going to be your nat gas ETFs. Uh, these are leveraged ETFs, so be very careful with these. One of the things our happy hour group says all of the time is that nat gas is the widow maker, right? So yeah, sure, you can make a lot of profit. You can also get hurt pretty badly in these. Um, but Nick is absolutely right. Uh, recently, cold is is really on a run. We're actually off this 13 handle. We're up about six points from there. Uh, tough to say where we go next, but these do make fairly uh, active trading vehicles during the day. So I don't really have a read on natural gas. I've been staying away from these. I've been trying to make my trading as easy on me as possible. I've really reduced size, reduced trading going into the holiday here, really waiting for for the uh the turn of the year here to next year now um let's get into some of the other smaller cap names and let's take a look here so iccm going to be the big one yesterday we actually got a pr five minutes after the close that said ice cures pro sense safe and effective in treating kidney tumors with an 89 and a half recurrence free rate based on interim study results. So this is what caused the gigantic pop yesterday because it was after hours. Remember, there's no halts in the after hours session. There's no circuit breakers or anything like that. Um, volume and liquidity is just not there. And we saw a gigantic run. I mean, this stock went from what? a dollar all the way up to about 11 bucks we actually had a gentleman trading this during the happy hour show yesterday which was uh pretty cool uh alerted by another happy hour member during the show so really pretty cool to see that trade um come to fruition in the show last night but today um this is likely going to be in play today now keep in mind we've really really retraced from the highs yesterday so i i do not think that this is going to 10 or 11 um if we do get a bounce here sure that's possible i would expect that at some point today but not a bounce to 10 or 11 so let's be let's be very clear on that uh could it happen i suppose that would be really cool. This would probably be the trader of the day, but I don't think that that's happening. Now, if we zoom in here a little bit, one of the things that you'll see is that we were leaking yesterday in the after hour session. As soon as we opened the pre-market session here today, uh, we went as low as 226. We bounced a little bit, really couldn't get over 322, and now we seem to be leaking back towards the 275 resistance. So with ICCM, I think what's going to be crucial here is waiting for a tradable setup. Now, I know a lot of people end up trying to trade this right out of the gate or trade some of these names right out of the gate, and maybe we do get a push out of the gate here. So if that's something that you're, you're looking to do, uh, you know, trade it accordingly. 
for me, I want to wait for this to actually find a bottom, find a base, and then set up to the long side. Uh, and I'm, I'm hoping that we get that here today. We shall see. Um, I see someone in the chat asking about CEI. No, there's nothing going on here. I, I don't know why anyone would be trading CEI. This is really kind of a junk stock. It's been involved uh, with some of the guys that are getting suspended or having legal trouble now. Um, it's 10 cents. Um, it's really junky. The chart looks awful. I don't see why this is any on anyone's radar. I, I don't think that this is a trade. I would not. I would not buy this. Um, sorry. I, I wish I had better things to say about CEI, but um, I. I don't. Uh, next here is going to be AUVI. Uh, AUVI. Um, this one we actually did an exclusive on this today, so I'm not going to trade this just to kind of keep everything kosher here. I have not traded this. I will not trade this here today. Um, one thing to note: if you click on the news tab, you can see uh, Applied UV announces two acquisitions potentially to double the size of the company. Uh, tells Benzinga the company announced the acquisitions of Pearl Lighting LLC and LED Supply Company. The combined transactions. Um, value of these acquisitions would be about 20 million dollars so a nice little acquisition here for auvi i would actually have to ask somebody that knows this space a little bit more to see if there are any really good synergies here long term uh i actually missed the uh i, I would i would want to go in here i did not see any of the interview or anything like that but i, I would want to ask about this the one thing that I will say is that for day trading purposes i'm i'm just going to stay away from this now we have a really nice formation here, right? In fact, if Zoltan is out there, I'll see if I can get Zoltan uh, to give me some more information on this. He's really good about stuff like that. Now, as far as trading goes, we actually have a pretty good move here, right? So this stock was about a dollar four yesterday. And today we popped as high as 155. I think one of the things that's most encouraging here about this pre-market action is that we're not just bleeding all of these gains back. We're not retracing this entire move. We're actually holding this here towards the end of the pre-market session. Got nine minutes here, about eight and a half minutes actually before the market actually opens. And we're holding right around VWAP. So you'll notice here that the, the support level that I drew on here is 131. That marks the two places that the stock bounced after its big move here in the pre-market. Uh, we've got VWAP here at 136 and a half. Let's call it 136 and uh, 137. And we'll see if we can actually push through and build above. As far as a potential trade here, I think 149 is going to be your first test. And then 155, a break above that probably sends this another five to 10 cents. Uh, so we shall see. Um, you only need to post things once. You only need to post things once. That is good enough for a timeout. So uh, sorry about that. Just post once. We will talk about Lucid. Don't worry. Um, so AUVI here, looking like this is, is trading up here. We might be able to get one of those range bake trades on here. We'll keep that uh on radar. Next tier off this list is going to be VRNA. And this stock, again, the biotechs have really been wild uh, this December. Of course, we had MDGL yesterday with a huge buyout stock traded up section. That stock is actually 238 bucks uh, here, in, even in today's session. Um, VRNA, we do have a catalyst here. Verona Pharma shares are trading higher after the company announced an estrophin. Oh, no, an cisfertrine. Okay, I'm not even going to try to pronounce some of these drug names. They're absolutely ridiculous, met primary and key secondary endpoints in the phase three. Now, remember, phase three, a lot of the times has been sell the news. So the thought here is that, again, we kind of want to wait this out. We don't necessarily want to buy this. The last time that we saw a stock really pop in the pre-market on phase three results, it spent the rest of the regular session bleeding back those gains. Just because that happened to a, another stack doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen here, but we are going to try to learn from that and make sure that we put ourselves in the best possible uh, chance to trade this. So um, one of the things that you'll see here is that really this needs to hold 1550. If this can hold 1550, uh, if this can hold 1550, maybe we can make a curl back towards that 20 handle. I really think that this 35 handle is going to be out of reach today. I think that that was just kind of a knee jerk pop. I really don't think we get back up there, but I wouldn't be surprised if this curled and tried to move through the VWAP towards that $20 handle. So keep VRNA on the watch list there. Next here is going to be BXRX. Uh, BXRX. Now, this one really interesting. I actually didn't see news earlier today. Yeah, I don't see uh, any any news on this one. We'll keep our eyes open for it. 
Um, but as you can see here, the stock that was about a dollar eighty yesterday traded up a dollar in the pre market. And I think the interesting thing here is that it stopped at two eighty nine both times. So we actually have a pre market double top here, and uh, we've retraced sixty cents out of that move. But we are kind of holding here. So I want to see where this ends up going. Now that we've made this formation, one of the first things I'd like to see is two thirty four. We got the VWAP at two forty six. So it looks like this area in here would be the next thing to attack for an upside move. Really, we want to hold 212, uh, maybe even what 220 here. Um, so we'll see. 212 represents the first time that this stock stopped on the bounce. 220 looks like the support. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and mark that off just because that's good. Still eight cents in, of space there. So we'll see where BXRX goes. Now, Let's also talk about Lucid. All right. So Lucid had an offering recently, and um, it says Lucid Group shares are trading higher after the company announced a successful capital raise of $1.515 billion. Now, uh, Mitch and I were going back and forth on a video that was recently posted that shows the Lucid uh, Dream Air, or whatever that the performance model is, absolutely smoking the Tesla Plaid, which is really awesome. Uh, I, I'm not a huge Tesla fan. I think the cars are kind of ugly, frankly. Um, so I'm open to some of these other EV cars. Now, Mitch seems to suspect that that is a bunch of editing tricks. So I don't want to go out and just say that that's exactly what happened. Um, however, this car is de definitely generating some butts, and the stock really has not. <laughs> <laughs> the nice it's a trap drop right there the stock uh really has not reflected that now the 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 contrarian in me says well you know the stock has really been weak but uh we're down here at about 760 here i really do think this car is is pretty nice and i would expect to see this stock trade back up when things get a little bit better but there's no telling when that's going to be the fact that they had a successful capital raise is good. I just wouldn't want to be in the stock if all of a sudden it turns out they need more capital because they were burning too much cash over 2023. So while I'm not in this yet, I am actually watching this and kind of stalking this for a swing long position. But again, no position uh, on this yet. Now, as far as day trading goes, we did pop here. We went as high as 778, and we're really kind of holding those gains. VWAP here is 750. So as long as we stay above VWAP here, we might have some more oomph to the upside, if you will. Not sure uh, how high this actually goes today, but what we'll try and do is we'll try and trade this on any type of uh, movable pop here. So Lucid having a good morning here. We'll see if it's actually a trap or if this causes us to yell in joy like Chewbacca. See, Mitch, I'm, I'm going to get back at you with those. I see um, you. I see you. <laughs> and, and then as always with the market, there, there are going to be some of these ETFs that uh, trade along with the market. We've been talking a lot about SQQQ, TQQQ, SOXS, and SOXL. Those two are on the gappers list here today. We'll probably trade those depending on what the market does. We'll see. Market had some pretty bad housing numbers here this morning. We'll see if that actually affects it going forward. Um, I see Amazon here uh, up in, in the pre-market, only barely. Looks like this is about flat. Amazon, too. I think that this was labeled a uh, top pick for 2023 by J.P. Morgan. Uh, I want to. I should make sure that I'm actually getting that right, but I'm pretty sure I saw that here uh, this morning on CNBC. So in any case, um, Amazon, th this is another one that if, if I can really feel good about Amazon making a bottom, this is one that I'd like to actually buy and hold for longer than a couple of minutes on a day trip. So uh, that's about all I got here. Let's see if there's anything from the chat that people want to take a look at. Crow says ICCM looking like the one. Crow, we got a huge range here, right? So we'll see what ICCM does. W asking about Summit. Uh, I'm not sure why. I think, isn't the Summit trade kind of over? Oh, I guess not. Look at yesterday, man. Yesterday, Summit really had a great afternoon. We're still holding some of these gains. So it looks like we've retraced about 50% of this up move. Really, what I'd like to see this do is move above 435 and 450. W, thanks for a shout in this one. I, I actually took this one off my radar a tad prematurely. So really appreciate the assist out there. 
The thing that would really get Summit going here is a break of the intraday high, but at 540, I think that might be just a little out of reach today, especially if we don't see large volume flows. Uh, we've actually seen larger volume over this name recently, uh, so it's going to be harder for this to actually get on and stay on the relative volume scanner, but we'll see what we end up doing here. 435, going to be that first spot to look at. We're currently at 424. Okay. All right, levels for you on that ICCM, $4, 250 for me. They're the ones that stand out. How do I do this, right? I'm not looking at this chart right here. What I do is I look in the past, right? That's all we need to do. We need to look back at this stock. Has it ever done this before? Well, look back in here, right? Look what happened here. Well, look at what happened back there, 2021. You got a pop that went really high, right? Then you got a lot of support around that 256. Look at the resistances, a lot on this, that $4. Then eventually we got another pop that eventually went through that $4 spot and was a big pop. So we can look for a similar. We can look for that to kind of hold the 250 pullback and get back through four. That's going to be the level where I think you really get that nice push up. So from this point, I would be looking for maybe kind of red to green towards the 250. Uh, 250 area, it could even go as low as the pre-market low. You got pre-market lows around the 224. We'll see what happens there. But the big push I, I'd expect is a push from 325 to 4, and then we'll look to see if really you get volume expansion and it wants to drive to 8. We'll see what happens there. Sark also looking good, of course. That's my swing. Uh, up about 6.3% here towards the open. Looking for about 10% on that Sark trade. Not going to be too mad if I can get 10% on it. Uh, just going to keep working it. And we'll look for some stocks to come down. Um, of course, growth names are some of the ones that I'll be looking to short. I'll let you guys know if I get an ending. All right. I'm going to pull my screen down. I'm going to go ahead and reshare my other screen here. Just give me one second. No problem. I can handle it for you in the, in the meantime. S, so, uh, SMMT Summit first move here is down. Take a look at some of the other. I'm going to focus on the relative volume because I want to make sure that I'm following the volume flow. X curve first move here is down. Let's take a look at VLON. This is another one of those penny stocks for you folks. VLON first move is down here. All right, let's check in on ICCM. ICCM. Move above 29 for BTU would be interesting for me. We'll see what happens a little later in the day. Um, right now, down move here in Netflix, looking around to see what is doing well. Financial services are up, energy's up, basic materials. Uh, what's getting hit is real estate, consumer cyclical, and technology right out the gates here. Okay, so right here on ICCM, this 323, this represents the high of the pre-market. A snap into here, and we are in a bit of a gap. And mark that gap off. I think it's about, yeah, just about a dollar 30s here. So uh, we'll see if ICCM can get going. 323, we have taken that out. I think, yeah, here we go. So 330. So ICCM moving here now. We'll see where we go. I have no position in this, just kind of watching. This moved a little too quickly right out of the gate here. Uh, good shot by our chat. Our chat was all over it. Wiss, man. I, I like the name change. It's easier, easier to go by. I like the name change. You were all over this. Crows on this too. Would love to hear how you guys are trading at 330. Nice little 10 cent pop here above that 323 level. We are in this gap, by the way. We are in this gap. So it'll be interesting to see um, if this gap holds. If we take a look at the at the on the way up here, it's obviously not as gappy. Maybe we get a little bit of slowdown here at about four around that round number. But for the most part, we are absolutely in this gap here. ICCM. Mm -hmm. Pushing strong there now towards 340s. It looks 350? like it's trying to get to the 350 area. Netflix pushing back after a report this morning by Wall Street Journal, knocking it down. So that's bouncing back a little bit. Taking a look at the overall market. Market's heading down here towards 378, 77s. I'll put that on the left-hand side here. It doesn't look good there, team. I'm still looking bearish on the day. We're starting to get some down hit right now. Just be careful out there. Snow looks interesting for me. Crow, nice. Got it right at the gate, and you're already out. Crow, way to ring that register early, my man. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Money, money, money. That, oh, that one, that's a money Mitch drop. I can't, I can't possibly 
take that drop from you, Mitch. By the way, someone was asking about Pixie earlier in the chat here. Pixie, Pixie great looking daily chart, right? We did kind of bottom out here right around uh, 8.75, nine bucks. When we popped off the bottom here, we have this great daily formation. So it looks like it's trying to curl back up and maybe take out the top here. Looking at the level here, the top of the body of that candle is 22, and then the top of the wick is about 24. So I would say that 22 to 24 range gonna be some resistance here in Pixie. If we are able to break that to the upside, I think the stock can go a little bit more. I have no position in this, but this was being mentioned in the chat. W, I think you were asking about this. Any Anyone on Pixie, great daily formation on this chart here. Um, no actionable buy signal as of today, however. All right, looking at X right now, looking to see if we're going to get some kind of lift in some kind of stocks right now. We're seeing a little bit of a push there, a little bit of a battle right now in the SPY. That's what's really going on. Eric K got a bounce with some of those growth names getting a bounce here out the open. Uh, Beam, Coin getting a little bit of a bounce, but... We'll see what happens. I'm trying to be patient today on the SPY. We could get a little bit of a chop towards the upside, maybe a couple pullbacks. Uh, Moderna staying strong today, now back towards 193 after a big pullback. Looks like the last two days. That one doesn't look too bad after it pulled back off of 185. Nice little bottoming action there. Answering a support question here real quick, but I don't think I'll need to drop off. So just one second. Not a worry, man. I'll t handle this. So looking at WDC, not looking too bad today. Western Digital Corp, not something I trade often. It's beaten down right now. Uh, Disney, not looking too bad right now. We're seeing a little bit of a bounce back. Overall, the SPY is just kind of choppy right now. That's what's keeping us on the chop. Financial services up, basic materials, not looking too bad. Steel, copper, coal, CBTU right now. I was looking for a move back above 29. It just did that. I'm looking at this pullback here. Doesn't look too bad here for BTU. Like this BTU trade here. I might get in this one off the VWAP. All right, getting into BTU here, taking a little bit of BTU, got 28.99s here. Peabody to the right-hand side. Let's look to see if we can get it back into the 29s. Willing to add at 28.85. Risk right now is towards E80. The spread's a little wide there, so be careful, team. It's about $0.12, cents, $0.13, cents. so you got to be careful there on BTU. Uh, General Mills had earnings today. I wanted to take a look at that. It was going to bounce. That's actually coming down. That doesn't look that great there. Food distribution up on the day. That doesn't look too bad. US, USFD there, that, that's moving up. SYY. Food distribution stocks, it's kind of some boring names, but not a bad area right now in the day. So BXRX here, first move was down. It does look like it was bouncing. It was going towards that two level, stopped at 206 and kind of turned around here. So we're currently at 215. Really what we would need to see is a move above 235 on BXRX. Remember, this is the one that had that double top in the pre-market. Be interesting to see if we can get all the way up near that three. Not sure. First move here on this bounce back is going to be a takeout of 235. Spy trying to make an up move here at 379.49. So let's see if we can get back towards 380.50. That's going to be a nice little push there towards 379.60s. Here we are starting to push above. Really, it's around this 380.50 that I want to see if we can actually get above that level. Get through these highs above that. If not, we could just reject from these. Not a bad move there by the overall market. We'll take a look to see some bigger names to see if they're starting to get a lift here. Of course, a uh, beaten down name like Tesla is still down, but up from the open. Uh, Microsoft is up from the open. Apple's actually down from the open. It's around the VWAP. If we're looking for something that's lagging behind. 
Amazon nice. bouncing. What you got? No. I was going to say, nice job, folks, on ICCM. That was definitely the move there out of the go. gate here. Went right through 323, stopped at four. What I'd like to see here now, this would be the next spot to trade. Let's have it consolidate in here. Let's have it shake out some of these hands, hold this level, and then try to make another move through four. Remember, top of this gap here is 455. So if we consolidate here and we actually hold this area, that'd be really great for breaking the top of this candle and then going to close that gap off so uh, awesome stuff here looks like uh the crow and uh jay wild are hitting this i probably missed um probably missed a couple of the other people that were trading this in any case great job here team trading iccm okay so iccm here's this is what we were trying to avoid right big knife here we'll see where this settles let's wait for it to settle before we take the next trade here let's wait for it to settle all right, looking for BTU now to get through 29 and through the high on the day. High is up there towards 29, 24. Let's see if we can get that little push. VRNA has pretty good volume here, but really just still kind of trading sideways. Really want to break out of this range here. Looks like about $20 VRNA. Still two, 225 away from that. Let's take a look at AUVI. This is the one we did the exclusive report on here this morning. Looks like that is bouncing off of that 117 level. Again, for AUVI, first level here to beat, to make note, if it can clear out that 139, 140, maybe it can go a little bit higher towards this 150. 55 level but bouncing here so getting some pretty good volume looks like that volume is expanding we'll see where this ends up settling all right 29 17s here on the offer for btu let's see it take off to do 29 25s get to the next level up that's going to hit some resistance there at 29 30s from there we can go towards 29 43s you can see it on the hourly or the 15 let's go back a little bit you can see the price action that we're running right into Let's see if we can get up there to 2950s. Start actually getting some real lift in this. Let's see. Got up there to a high of 29.17. Now pulling back there towards 29. The big thing for me on BTU is the spread. The spread's about 10 cents, so you got to be careful here. And of course, if I get a big pop in, in it, I'll probably take the bid. We'll see what happens. Uh, SPY is now battling right back down towards 79.10. So that just goes to show us that, yeah, there's going to be some chop today. I don't expect just one kind of trend. Uh, there could be some up, down moves. So just be careful out there, team. DE is one that I was looking at, maybe seeing if it was going to come down. Eventually, that one I feel like can come down. But right now, it's staying strong. It is very choppy today so far, someone. That's really been par for the course for the market. I mean, just looking at the SPY, it really can't figure out uh, what it's going to do. And I think you asked earlier, Zunaid will be back. And I believe Zunaid is scheduled to be back tomorrow. Isn't that right, Mitch? Yeah, I, I, I'm not going to give him a date just because he's been going through some uh, kind of things to, this week. So yeah. I, I don't expect him on much this week. I'll just say that right off the bat. Uh, don't expect to see him on much this week. And it's okay, team. Like always, you know, you don't always have to trade every week. And like always, we aren't going to have everybody present. It's going to happen sometimes. Yeah, and especially uh, around the holidays. I mean, let's face it. And, yep. and again, just to kind of give you a preview, the next week, the week after Christmas, I am actually on my vacation. I will not be here all week uh, next week. But I'll be back in the new year. And actually, that first day back, January 3rd, that Tuesday, I'm actually traveling to Detroit. So I have a slightly earlier flight, Mitch. I hope to be able to join for the tail end of the show, but I will definitely miss the beginning of that show. Well, we got a little pop there to BTU. Went there towards 29.30s. Nice. Looking to see if it can get to the 29.40s, take majority of it out, and then let the rest of it work for the day. Uh, but just letting it try to get towards 29.40s, since we got our original entry at 29, that seems to make sense for a 4-1 to one return. You guys know how I love my 4-1s to ones or 5-1 to one outlook. So let's see if we can get it. If not, I mean, something in the 30s won't be the worst. It'll be like a 3-1, to one, but... I'm trying to get it into the 40, trying to be patient here. We'll see. 
Tom, this uh, makes right me down. this makes me really happy. Uh, yeah, I took a break as well, Ryan. Did you get a new mic? You sound crystal clear, Tom. Uh, mm. This is actually this is actually part of the production step up. Although the mic is the same, I actually got a equalizer and mixer and preamp built into one device that makes it a lot easier to control and allows me to get much more crystal clear sounds. And so it's not just the soundboard. It's, it's not just the, the cool sound effects. It, it is also the overall quality. I'm really glad that you noticed that makes me that makes me quite happy. And Becca, we know that you're sending positive vibes. Your Indian Prince is doing fine. Uh, he will be back again, just some holiday stuff going on. Uh, snow looks like it's coming right back down. You coming right back down. Be careful there, team. I'm starting to see uh, spy looking heavy here. Uh, looks like it wants to come down. But of course, we'll see if it really breaks here. Uh, names like Roku starting to break down, ZM starting to break down, Tesla that got a little bit of a bounce right back down towards the lows. If you see Tesla go, you guys know sometimes we got to go. So Tesla not looking too good right there. Spy taking another little push down here as we're down towards 70, uh, 378.40s. It's just going to be a tough type of day right now, team. Also and seeing the China name sell-offs just to give you guys that. And speaking of that, so remember VKTX, this is actually one we had on our list. I think we also traded this yesterday. VKTX had a pretty decent day yesterday, really stopped at that 722, got stopped in the pre-market at 722 again. And it looks like right here at the open, didn't quite get to 722, stopped at 720, and then a big knife back. So this is why we pay attention to these key levels. And this is why when we're actually day trading, a lot of the times we wanna wait for these levels to fall before using that as an entry trigger. I've been guilty of trying to front run some of these key levels, buying it maybe one, two cents ahead of the key level, only to see it be rejected, just like this one was, and then staring at a loss. So we're still kind of seeing that range breaks to the upside have not been uh, the best possible play. We've really had better luck with the curl plays. Crow, you've been doing a really good job on some of those curls as well. What if Zunate is Santa and we never see him in the same room? Well, then, you know what, Shelly? I need to be better next year because so far, I might as well have gotten coal. You've seen how much Mitch has traded coal. It looks like Mitch has only gotten coal from Zunaid. So if Zunaid is, in fact, Santa, Mitch and I are doing something wrong, and uh, we're not quite getting the uh, top-shelf gifts uh gifts i was wondering who gives them all those haircuts it has to be all the elves all the little elves <laughs> with the little scissors <laughs> oh man we'll see what's going on i see cm wants to break four if it breaks four it can really run to tell you the truth there's the break of four it just did uh broke to 420 now look to see if the volume increases on this candle that's what i would look for uh you're up there towards four 11s now and it did do a nice little pull back there close to the vwap it didn't get close uh it was just a little bit off there 321 was the vwap it went down to 325 now it's up there to the four handle holding the four we'll see if it keeps pushing it's not a bad stock there iccm looks like it can continue going now and i i, I would expect to eventually see this one maybe halt as it starts filling in the gap there 455 next stop i think there's yeah, four 40s I think you're absolutely right, right, Mitch. 455 is that next spot. Remember, we had this, we had this move telegraphed. And I think one of the best things about this is not only if you miss that first move up, we actually back tested that 323 spot and held it. And now we're going to this next key level, 451 here. Uh, we'll see if we end up getting to 455. Just an absolute monster move here on ICCM. We telegraphed this one from the beginning. Uh, good shout out to the crow who said it looked, he said before this move, before this move, that this one looks like the one here today certainly does. Certainly does. Good morning, Eric. I told the story of your ICCM trade last night. Congrats for you ringing the register. XLE. All right. I'll take a look there. Um, and uh, Eric, taking a look. What's your thoughts on the XLE chart? I have a put spread, slightly bullish outlook, sold the 82, uh, bought the 79. All right. So you're a little bit of a mix there. And I think you're nothing wrong with the XLE having a little bit of a mix there. Um, I do think that your downside outlook is probably towards the 80. So you bought the 79 put. 
can't say wrong with that. And right now it looks like it's trying to bounce a little bit. You could be stuck between 87 and 82 for a little bit of a while here before it breaks down towards the 80. I think you're getting pullbacks and they're measured. So they're not just complete falling off the tape. And so that's not a bad outlook there. You can see X XOM is not doing bad today. So um, that's what I would say about XLE is that it's not a bad looking chart. XLM uh, bouncing up a little bit. XLE. It's just going to be all about the dailies. I think you still get a little bit of a pullback, maybe towards the 80, and then eventually a bounce. I wouldn't want it to see it break kind of over here, the kind of the 80 mark, this little bounce mark that you have, 78s. If that happens, well, then you're probably going to have to go and get, get running out of that. But you could also just get a pullback uh, towards this 80 and then bounce right back towards the 92. That's what I'd be looking for. But it's all going to be dependent on also if prices keep coming down. If prices keep coming down, yeah, oil will do a little bit better, but it might just be stuck in a chop. And if you're looking for some chop, a little bounce, not looking too bad there. Uh, XLE, real quick, uh, one thing on the XLE, uh, Eric was part of this too. We actually had a number of people discussing the XLE in our in the happy hour show. Uh, one of the things that we noticed here technically from the chart is that XLE really found resistance around that double top right around 94. Now, it wasn't quite... 94 a um, little bit little bit under 94 but as soon as we were unable to break this on multiple attempts the next move here was down really what we need to see is where does this actually find some support and turn around looks like it's trying to get some support off that 82 level uh but let's let's wait and see if this ends up breaking down here definitely btu didn't give me that break into the 2940s pulled back right towards my entry so we'll see if it gets back up there towards 2920s and 2940s still looking for it and overall financial services actually are not looking too bad today jpm getting a little bit of a bounce back mastercard a little bit of a bounce back uh but there's not big moves it's just slight moves energy also strong today basic materials silver having a decent day so if you're looking at silver stocks those are doing well. PAAS, AG, MAG, bouncing back a little bit. But I think these are short-lived trades. Uh, gold also having a little bit of a bounce back day. GLD trying to fight above that 17 right now. We'll see if that happens or not on GOLD. Gold. I love gold. See if we can get above that 15, uh, 17 today. There's another move back up for BTU. We'll see if we can actually finally start getting moving there. Sark not looking too bad there. Getting a little bit of a bounce. Pullback. Could add to that name, but I'm just going to keep swinging it there to see if I can get eventually towards 70. Has not been a bad uh, name to keep trading. FCX, I know that was mentioned a little bit earlier today. Copper was pulling back. Found some support, I feel like, towards 37. Now you're getting a little pushback towards 38. We'll see if we can actually get above 38. If not, we could just be trapped between 38 and 37 for a little while now on FCX. That's, of course, copper. Uh, real quick, good shout out here, Dan. Uh, how you doing today? Good morning. I will. I'd agree with you. Uh, I would agree with you. I have slightly different numbers. I think. I think I've got 550 instead of 565, but those are about the same, and I have exactly the same number uh 725 uh, as the next spot here on iccm so really let's see we right we've taken out this 455 uh we're trading below it let's see if we can actually move through it on volume uh would love to see the volume continue to expand 550 to me looks like the next level there and then above that 725 so um if this ends up moving here it's still a really really good trade here on deck we will play that and see if it happens it's holding the 9 EMA on pullbacks right now. That's right below it towards the 430s and 428s. If 428s break, I think you get that hard downside action on four. Just be careful, team. Like always, understand where your risk and reward is on a stock like this. And, and it can Absolutely. be big moves. Yeah, that's, that's a really good, uh, really good piece of advice there. Yeah, it, it follows the trend, follows the trend until it snaps the trend. And when these it follows snap the, trend the trend until it doesn't. <laughs> well, yeah, and it's not like it does a little washout usually. It's usually bigger washouts, right? And so that's where you got to be a little bit careful. Um, normally, it's not like measured pullbacks. It's deep time frame pullbacks. So just be careful on stocks like that. 
All right, let's get back to the spy action, see what we're seeing there. We saw a little bit of a bounce off 378. Not much cracking through the 378. And what do you see? Sideways action in my eyes. I'm not seeing too much of one trend here. What I'm seeing more of is a bunch of nothing, a bunch of up and down moves, but nothing continuing. And more along, what are we seeing? Chop. So just be careful out there as we continue through this chop. Disney bouncing off the VWAP. So if you wanted to take a look at Disney, that doesn't look too bad. Netflix bounced off the VWAP. Um, I'll show you guys those Apple names. yet to bounce, interestingly enough. So Disney and Netflix bouncing. Apple yet to bounce here. Uh, Apple still at lows here, 130. Yeah, I don't like Apple even at all. Uh, it doesn't look good. And when Apple doesn't look good, the overall market usually doesn't end up good. So in my eyes, I've been uh, calling out Apple as a short from around 150. And it's been a short since then. It's continued that downward uh, turn. And it looks to me like we're going towards those 128 lows to break that. And that's a long-term break. Now from there, we could easily be back at 120s, 110s, 100s for that being said. I'm looking for long-term Apple underneath 100, coming back down there towards around 80. I'll definitely take some Apple. But I'm going to wait and see if I can get it to come down. Uh, Pat says AMC is going to Uranus. Uranus. That's probably a joke, isn't it, Pat? Um, uh, first of all, AMC about flat here, not really doing much of anything. Is so. it getting on the Rocket Labs? <laughs> I'm not sure. I know they had a delay of their uh, rocket launch. Kind of hit them hard this morning. Can't blame that outlook. Is that RKLB? Mm -hmm. is that they the usually struggle. I mean, just saying that they usually do struggle. All right, here's one that uh, it's probably not the, you know, the, the Rocket sexiest Lab's trying name to you're gonna it. hear today. Um, about to take a little bit of a shot here. Let me get. Let me let it bounce a little bit. Reject the move here. Looking at DE for potential short. Why? Uh -huh. Because I feel like it could pull back. Um, you're not alone in that. Um, that is actually, we, we have a battle going on in the happy hour between me and another member, Frank. He is short DE. I am long DE, um, for, for that particular breakout. That is a DE is actually a floating Island right there. And so mm -hmm. I'm obviously sticking with my floating Island resolution to the upside. Uh, he thinks that it's going to break down. Honestly, he was, it's looking pretty good here, but the, it just will not break that line that you drew Mitch. It just will not break it yet. Mm -hmm. uh, if we do, though, we'll see where it's where it's going next. Probably, BTU probably looking probably good. Going towards 420 if it breaks that. By the way, sorry. No, you're good, man. It's kind of like a W pattern here for BTU. Really want to see it get through the highs, 2930s. If it can't get through the highs on this next push, we'll just get out of it. But looking for this to really start pushing. If not, we'll take what we can get there on BTU. ICCM might be curling here. It looks like a bounce. Looks where, where did that pull go to? 385. That last yank looks like it's trying to bounce here if it can hold above four on ICCM. Big push on spy. So just if you see some flips, that's what you're seeing. Now, the big thing for me is right 380.50s. We need to see the spy really take a trend today. Uh, it's just been kind of bouncing around. FDX, of course, FedEx reports after the earnings today, after the bell. Uh, so they'll be reporting their earnings. That's FedEx. We'll see what happens to them. Will they get smacked down after last time they reported earnings? They definitely got hit hard and haven't been able to make up the wall of worry. Uh, Brian, uh, one thing here. Brian DC saying, can one of my Benzinga family tell me to quit being a wimp and hop in being too cautious today? Well, first of all, Brian, I am not going to call you a wimp. What I will say here, though, is, um, you know, th this is this is definitely a battle that traders are going to go through. And you kind of have to figure this one out here yourself. Um, we, as your Benzinga family, absolutely believe in you. Just make sure the easiest way to break out of this Make sure that you have a plan for both directions, right? Don't don't trade on hopium. Uh, make sure that you have a plan. There's also, there's nothing wrong with being cautious. I myself, near the end of the year here, I've got a lot going on throughout the, the course of the day. It's been kind of a crazy market. I have really dialed back my trading 
And I'm going to continue to do that into next year. I really want to see where this market goes. So don't worry. There will be other plays. But don't forget, you got this. You got this. You can do it. All right. If you're bullish on this move, Microsoft making a little bit of a lift. Of course, Amazon also. Uh, you, you guys heard that mentioned this morning. There's the BTU now towards 29.24. I'll look to keep that pushing here. Uh, SPY looks like it's trying to push DE. Get, they do that little spike up there. So I'm waiting for it to reject the 334 uh, move towards the upside. And if that does happen, then I can get short. But it's going to be also the SPY rejecting the 380 continuation. Just went up there, tapped it, came right back down. Just be careful, team. It's just chopping around right now. Rudy I told says, you, Mitch, you're a bit too bearish. What, what, what's wrong? I mean, I'm, there's still being some downside moves here. Come on, man. Come on, Mitch knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. No, I mean, the key there is uh, always looking for reversals, right? I mean, whenever we're oversold, we're going to be getting some type of bouncing, right? I think overall the SPY has come down really, really fast. In the next two to three days, we should get some type of bounce. Why? That's just based off RSI. Uh, and that's just daily RSI. Um, now, I do expect us maybe to do a little bit of a whoosh and then a recovery. But we are recovering already on the day. It could start pushing up. So look for stocks that have beaten down RSIs to start finding some type of bounce. Um, stocks like that on the S&P 500. That's probably what you want to be looking for. Look at Costco finding a little bit of a bounce today. Um, and it's going from red to green. So if you're going to stay strong on the SPY, on a bounce today, a beaten down name like Costco could get that reversal sign because it's beaten down on the RSI also. Bristol Myers, LNC, Target showing up there. Um, so just kind of just bringing in some names. Humana, uh, Humana has some low RSI. HUM starting to get a little bit of a bounce back there. Tesla, of course, shows up on this radar too. So if you're thinking that we are getting that bounce back in the spot today, well, Tesla could be one of the stocks you guys can be looking for. There's BTU to 2933s into the 2940s. All right, putting out a 38 limit there. Let's see if I can get filled. Boom, got it. 29.38, so the majority of it out there on BTU. Now looking for the rest of the move into the 40 handle and to uh, 29.50s if we can get it up there. BTU, not a bad little trade there. Coal, baby. Bring that coal. Santa loves that coal. going to be that time of year man boom shakalaka that is a great drop that is a great oh. drop and see here's the thing mitch this is a a learning process right i've actually never had a soundboard so there's a certain amount of uh, figuring out that you kind of have to go through and i've discovered i've discovered a really important lesson as you can see the more you fuck around the more you're gonna find out. So again, uh, the more you F around, the more you're gonna find out, and that's exactly what's happening to me. So keep that under your hat. That's it right, right there, guys. And like always, guys, hit the like button. Looks like the SPY now making a little move up there towards 380, uh, 380.50s. We're battling that spot. Can we get through there? I even drew that line a little earlier ago uh, to just kind of just draw that level for us. Are we actually going to hang out above the 380.50s today and see a little run, or are we rejecting from that level and heading right back down? If we head right back down, I'm going to go in the short mode expecting the takedown. But if we move above this 380.50, I'll play catch up. I'm probably looking for some longs. Let's see what happens here. Costco, I think one of the things that I really like about let me let's let me bring this chart up here because this Costco. is I, I'll say this. So here we are. I'm gonna wait this out today. I know we're bouncing today. Costco definitely in this buy zone. So what I would say here, especially, you know, we're, we're talking about 
not necessarily taking, uh, trying to dial back our risk, making sure that we're properly accounting for our risk and, and not, you know, over trading or anything like this. Costco, I really like in here. And what I will say is that if it can really hold this, I got the bottom of this channel at about 450. If it can really hold this 450 and, and looks to kind of turn its momentum around, might be a little bit of an ad here. The problem that I have with swings right now is that my view on the market is that we actually bottom and set the actual bottom at some point next year. I'm in the camp that we do it in Q1, but there's a lot that seems like it might be dragging this out. It might be Q2 or maybe even Q3 uh, per, it, in order to get that bottom, excuse me. So we'll see. Um, I wouldn't want to necessarily buy unless I was just adding small if I think the market is going to put in another bottom uh, right around the corner here, but we'll see. I'm definitely watching this. For me, an ad on Costco would be more of a longer term ad, more so than a trade itself. So th these are, you know, I'm, I'm watching this one. I, I would add here small first, uh, have not done that yet. I will update you as we do that though. Let's check back in on ICCM. ICCM 321 safe, bidding to hold three. Oh, okay. So you're bidding. I got you, Dan. You're bidding three, I think. 321 safe. So this is the spot I think that you're talking about. Um, yeah, I'm maybe I'm just misunderstanding you a little bit there. Probably my fault. No, don't worry. Let's take a look. Spy still battling that same area, the 380.50s. We actually rejected that plenty of times now. Just looking for like a five-minute candle to close here and reject the 380.50s. I'm just going to keep watching that level. That's the level to see uh, bigger candles close above to show us strength. We're not seeing that right now. Crow, uh, Crow looking for 350 as a potential buy zone here on ICCM. Crow, appreciate you giving the, me that level. Um, Dan, let me know. Are you waiting for a pullback to three, or are you, or, or a pullback to that 321 level? Let me know. I, it's it's me. It's not it's not you. It's me. Uh, to quote Seinfeld, there. All right. Just to give perspective for right now, spy battling in an important spot. And what do you see? You see majority of sectors up from the open. This is the important level for us. If we can really make a drive from here on the spy, well, then I feel like we'll get that bullish day. But if we reject here on like, let's say a five or a 10 minute candle, then I think we come right back down. This is where you're starting to see some stocks make expansions up. And a lot of this is growth names, getting a little bit of a bounce back like Unity, Snow, pushing here strong. So if you want to see names like that, growth names, right? Unity, uh, giving a nice little lift here. You can see it here on the left-hand side snow getting a nice little lift here and so that just goes to show me growth is trying to get a little bit of a push back today let's see if it turns around or is it a growth on type of day it looks like it is right now of course i can always change up but uh arkk being strong today that also shows me a strength move there twillow making a good move uh square making a good move there roblox making a good move so that, that just goes to show you what type of stocks are making a nice little move there. I got another one for you here, Mitch. I got uh, this is for you and those lucid dreamers as well. Lucid here bouncing off of the red green line, interestingly enough. So remember, we were up in the pre-market after that uh, news about a successful capital raise. We ended up selling off. That was confirmed by taking a look at the volume candles today. Pretty much all selling right out of the gate, but really did bounce off of that red green line. Looks like 723 is the mark there. And since then, it's just been buying volume. So we're actually up almost 40 cents here, 37 cents uh, back towards uh, the level that we were at this pre-market. So um, showing this strength is great. I think if we get any more increase in volume here, a move above 770 is possible. And if that happens, that actually might challenge uh, the 780 pre-market high, maybe even eight. So Lucid here, first move was down, but uh, decent bounce here and some decent buying volume. Uh, looks like ICCM bounced off the VWAP. Let's see where, where where that ends up going. Let's take a look at AUVI. This is one that we had that exclusive on. Uh, so it looks like this is still trying to find its bottom and then move. Looks like we've had a couple of snapbacks here. Uh, we want I want to see this volume actually pick up. Volume's been kind of tailing off here. If we see the volume pick up, that might be another potential trade. Uh, 
What's your thought on Roblox long term, Mitch? This is a, this one seems like a battleground, right? Ro- Roblox seems to have a lot of people that really, really like it. Um, they say that the kids love it, but the stock just it, it's not been easy. It's got the the Kathy Wood, uh, you know, aura on it. If that's I don't know if you think that's a good or a bad thing. What do you think about Roblox? You like this? Uh, I would just say that at the end of the day, I think it's going to be one of the things that will maybe not disappear in the next couple of years, but I don't see it like taking off. So in, in that case, I think it's going to be something that might be even like a $10 stock, $12 stock, $15 stock. I don't see it too much. Okay. I don't even see it as a $50 stock. I see this more as a cheap name that just sticks around, uh, has some earnings, I uh, don't see much growth driving. And my okay. biggest thing is uh, they need a new product. It can't just be was, one product and, and expect to have that success forever. Yep. Um, there are going to be other products that step in here. Yeah, I, I suspect that that's probably going to happen, but I have no insight into the product pipeline there. So good stuff on Roblox. Um, all right, so let me go back to ICCM. Dan, I appreciate the update here. Um, good stuff there. Let me get the chart up. Dan saying, yes, 321 is an ideal pullback spot. Not this 15, not this 15 minute candle needs a bit more time. Uh, so you're looking to pull back towards this spot that would have marked our pre-market highs where we kind of ripped through to begin with here. Um, prob- and you were taking a look at 15 minute candles. That's right. I, for- I forgot you actually showed me this. Um, and so what you're looking for is a, a little bit of a, a move back here towards this level. Makes a lot of sense here. So you're looking for kind of a round to here, which would set a higher low than the, the first move up and then the, perhaps the next move up here. Okay, good stuff. Uh-oh, we got uh, Crow disagreeing, saying uh, looks like it's setting up here. We'll see. We, we will watch this one. This one, definitely the stock du jour. Um, we'll see where this ends up getting here. I have no position in this one. Again, I'm dialing back on some of these trades here. I'm going to keep mentioning them off the scanner, but dialing it back here towards the end of the year. Uh, Bill is saying Roblox has one product the same way Netflix has one product. Yeah, Netflix product has a lot of content that makes up that product, though. I, I guess maybe you could say the same thing about Roblox, couldn't you? Yeah, I think that's the hard part there. Uh, the the problem there, I think, is that the age group that Roblox goes for, yes, they spend money, but I think it's a limited amount, right? Sure. Um, like Ryan and I, um, if we really like the game, and over time we considered it to be valuable. We may we might spend, you know, a little bit more money than I think a child would. Right. Like, you know, at least from when I was growing up, I wasn't able to get access to money on a weekly basis. I don't know about the kids nowadays, but in well, that I'll tell case, you what, Mitch, I was I did my chores, man. I was out there mowing the lawn every oh, weekend. I was cleaning the gutters. I was shoveling the driveway. I did all of my chores. So I was man. able to do that. But what I will say, Mitch, even with that, let's call it an income stream, it's kind of a joke as that is, uh, mm-hmm. it still was not enough to just pump money into these games. Now, when I was yeah. a kid doing chores, we really didn't have games with microtransactions. I'm dating myself here a little bit. <laughs> and then as far as games today, here's the, the th- I've just kind of been soured on this. Microtransactions, I know they're great for the company's bottom line. Um, ATVI would be a, a really good example of that. But um uh, for short me, like deer, my own... short deer. Oh, you are short deer here. Let me pull up your chart. Yep, I got you. So okay. rejection so, but, on the five quick, just... minute. Go ahead. This, this clearly on the five minute. You see the spy? A bunch of wicks right there. And where the wicks are? Look at the bodies. They couldn't get up there towards the 380.50s. That's why I'm taking my shot now. But uh, go ahead. Okay. Um what I was going to say about, uh, you know, video games and, and the, the extra money, I mean, I am, even even though I do have uh, more disposable income to spend on games, if I do like them, I am not a fan of spending more on the game than I initially spent unless I'm really sinking hours into it. And I mean like hundreds of hours, maybe even thousand uh, hours into the game, because I just... I don't know. I would almost rather kind of try a different game. I might be in the minority there. 
Uh, but that's that's just me. And by the way, anyone that is interested, I had a test run of my Twitch stream last weekend, and it re- went really well. Uh-oh. So if, if anyone is interested in watching a bad player try to get good in Escape from Tarkov, check out my stream this weekend and next week. Uh, we should be getting a wipe there, and I look, I hope to be able to stream Escape from Tarkov nearly every day. Boom, boom. I know if you guys are interested in that. All right, Spy trying to battle back above the 380.50s. What's going to scare me out is a move back above 380.70s. That's where I got to be careful there on Deer. But like always, understand your risk. For me, it's 434s. Don't want to see anything close above that for Deer. And then I can get out. The big thing for me is also always understanding the risk and reward. And in this case, uh, share sizing down big for Deer. Uh, towards the average sizing, right? It's all about more along what makes sense risk and reward wise. Risking about uh, about a point here, a little bit, maybe a, a little bit over about a point, about 1.2. And so got to be smart there. I would need to make at least three or four points on the downside. That's a washout through that 430s. So we don't look too bad there if we can get the washout from there, but it's going to be all dependent really on the spy here trying to test back above the four, uh, 380.70s and hold the 380.50s on pullback. And real quick, Mitch, here. Uh, Jingle, I've seen you ask a, a couple of times. We just missed it because we we're in the middle of it. We are absolutely not ignoring you, my man. Happy holidays. Yeah, it's fine going yours. On. I will go ahead and say let's take a look at B- BXRX here because this was one of the stocks on the list here this morning. Uh, Jingle, just to kind of give you an idea of what we were looking at here, basically the big thing here is going to be the double top. Uh, at 290, right? That's going to be your big level. Really, in order to get there, we we've we really need to kind of take out this 235 level. You can see that right out of the open, we did bounce right around the uh, this level, the 206, 208 level, and we tried to get all the way up to 290. That gave a pretty quick trade. I would say that this is not over yet. For me, the line here is going to be 235, right? I could easily see right now, even here at 222, I could see us trying to push up to that 235 only to be rejected there at 235. So really what I would need to see is a break of 235 with similar type volume that we saw earlier in the day. That might give us another run here. And if that volume really catches, maybe we can go all the way to 290 and perhaps even above 290. So this is what I'd be watching here on BXRX. We've taken no trades on this because ICCM has been so good here this morning, but good spot here because this one is still in play. Good things to keep in mind. Jay Rice bringing in. Market's been down five straight days. Sentiment poor, oversold. Snapbacks can happen. And Friday would be actually the first day of the potential Santa Claus rally. Uh, so speaking of the Santa Claus rally, Jay Rice giving us good content here as always. Good morning, Jay. Hope you and yours are doing well also. Uh, remember, market down five straight days. The sentiment is poor and oversold. Snapbacks can happen. And Friday is actually the first day of the Santa Claus rally. All of that checks out. No lies detected there. You know, what's funny about this, Jay, is uh, we had a couple of really seasoned traders in our um, a happy hour show last night, say the same thing, right? The sentiment is so poor. In fact, uh, the sentiment this year has been poor a lot. Uh, by the way, ICCM popping here. So it looks like we did move off that 365 VWAP. Got it high as what, four or something? Let me let me bring it up here real quick. ICCM moving. Um, but you're right. Those, those bounces can happen and they can happen quick. Now, we're also, the if we take a look at the SPY daily chart, I know I'm trying to do quite a bit here. So here you go, ICCM popping. Looks like that next spot here is going to be 455. We really just kind of moved off this area. Let me turn that VWAP on. VWAP's a little bit lower there. Uh, Oh, that was the moving average line. Sorry. Um, So anyway, ICC, I'm moving. If we take a look, let me just finish up my thought here, but I'm all over the place and I'm sorry about that. If we take a look at SPY here, especially on the daily chart, one of the things that this is really kind of set up for here, this recent sell-off from the trend line has been pretty brutal. It's been pretty much all selling. If we do catch here, this actually marks some really good timing for that Santa Claus rally. So like you were saying, first day is Friday, and then it would be the following week into what? I think two days into the new year. Um, So 
Chart wise, we're actually set up for this. The question is, does this actually materialize? Do we actually get this bounce and rally? Yet to be seen, but the setup is nice. Let's go back to ICCM here. And Mitch, if you got anything, I'm sorry for running you over there. I know you're in you're in the deer trade right now. No, you're good, man. I'm just moving all around, uh, just trying to figure out everything. It's also getting Slack messages. Um, about to cut the deer. The big thing is a rejection of the 38070s there for the spy. It's battling right now. About to cut it, but the spread is is wide right now on deer. That's the only thing that makes me a little bit spooked here. Uh, but if we can get rejection here for the spy to come right back down below 38050s, well, it could just drag right back down. So going to give it the chance for the market to determine this trade here. It's not going to be the biggest deal. We've already taken more profits than this trade on BTU. So not going to be worrying about it if we do get in the red. The big thing for me is the battle right now be between bulls and bears at this 38050. Uh, real quick, Mosca saying, I'll watch you, Ryan. Maybe even try and stream snipe it. You know what? You would probably be able to do that. Like I said, although I really, Ooh. really love the game, I am not at the quality of some of the streamers that you might already be watching. So I am susceptible to the stream snipe. I do play with the group though. So watch your back. Got out of the uh, deer there. Took the loss there. Not looking too bad. So what Still happened? in the green overall. So, okay, um, there we so, go. so the main, main thing is the spy, right? I drew myself my level there. Sure. Uh, 380 70s. We like kind of wicked. Then we cut right back below it. Now we're battling at this spot. There's a lot of wicks here. So the battle right now between kind of this 380-30s area towards 381 right now for the continuation to the upside. And so it did slow down there a little bit. We didn't really break down. I jumped on it as soon as we got a double top. Now it looks like we got a triple top there. So, hey, to each his own. We'll see if we act as resistance or it gets above that triple top and then creating this as a, a support zone. It very much could happen. The spy, you know, doing that to more stocks than just deer too, Mitch. If you want to pull up Apple, remember we talked about Apple before uh, being at the lows, that 130. We've actually bounced two and a half points here. Uh, five cents from a red green move here on Apple. Five cents from a red green move. So spy clearly causing a lot of these other stocks to bounce. I would imagine Costco. Uh, oh, actually Costco, not as strong as some of these. Not as strong as some of the other ones. Interesting. Interesting indeed. Amazon, nice little bounce too off those low levels from this morning. Let's check on COSM after yesterday's uh, huge move. Oh gosh, down another 21% here today on COSM. Yikes. So we'll see if COSM gets turned around here, but it uh, looks like that is continuing to break down. Mitch, you look angry. No, I just got a lot of stuff going on, man, trying to figure out everything. Uh, you know, day back, so much going on. Yeah, those those first day backs, the, the first day back after uh, any type of break, whether it's one day or a full week or something like that, they can uh, they can be brutal. Yeah, just Let trying to get a wellness everything. check on Mitch. Wellness check on Mitch, please. Over. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Oh, that's a good drop. All right. VRNA curling says the crow and cause M. All right. So Jay Rice here uh, saying for COSM, never buy a reverse split name for longer than a day. So um, you take a look here at COSM. This is basically what he's talking about. You know, Jay, this is that you actually saying the exact same thing that Zoltan, uh, one of our news desk guys, was saying. When you have these reverse split names that have these crazy moves, you do. You have that one day to make sure you get your gains locked in there. Good advice there. ICCM moving again. Spy moving again. Now making that high. And what do you see? Big volume push on that. So I'd be looking for some of these to continue now. If you've seen some uh, kind of bullish moves, maybe they continue and keep pushing. Uh, we'll see what happens on those names. Could be looking for maybe some scalp outlook here now, uh, but also look for maybe some bigger stocks to continue going. Like a Tesla's below VWAP right now. 
If you feel like the market is going to keep pushing, Tesla doesn't look too bad here. I'm not going to take it because I'm just not trying to take too many trades right now, especially towards the end of the year. I'm okay with just holding the BTU, try to make a bigger gain on that, uh, set a stop at break even. Uh, but looking for Tesla maybe to get a little bit of a bounce here, come back there towards the 148. Doesn't look too bad. BWAP, I have it right now towards 146.62. And so that's around this area. It doesn't look bad. We'll see if it gets a lift. Apple. Who's getting their apple today? Let's see. Apple pushing strong there. Just because to show you that sometimes you are going to get these bounces. Does this mean that, you know, we're back into rally mode? No, nah, I mean, I think it's just oversold conditions uh, finally coming into play. Big push there in Apple. Overall market is now up there towards 3150s. Now we look to see if 38075 holds its support. That's what I would be looking for. If not, it looks like we could continue this trend towards the upside today. So still thinking about maybe cutting my Sark as we're seeing it pull back a little bit here. Uh, but if it can hold the trend, it's not going to be looking too bad. Looking at it, it's right around here. Uh, 65 50s, 65 40s, it should hold. So, gonna give it a chance there. Don't want to see it cut 65 today. And that's Sark. Sark in it. Are you Sark? Look at Apple. See what happens. Nice move there in Apple. Yeah. Apple's been making a great move today. That's why I could see if maybe if, if we are gonna get this big bounce in Spy, maybe Tesla gets a big buy, uh, bounce here. Doesn't look too bad. Healthcare bouncing today, technology bouncing, financial services holding up, basic materials doing well, coal, steel, having a nice little push today. So if you're looking at some strong areas, industrial metals, copper, let's see how that FCX did. That actually held and started pushing towards the upside. We'll see if these can continue making moves. Not a bad day there in basic materials as we are getting some stocks to make a big move up. Uh, penny stock making a big move today, not looking too bad, is Hootie. Hootie. Like an actual penny stock, like a couple of pennies? Uh, no, nah, it's not really. To me, I, I think I consider anything under five really to yeah. me as penny okay. stock. Wow, that uh, is. But it's a big, it's a nice move. You know? So interestingly enough, uh, Mitch, I actually, I, I don't recall that being on my relative volume scanner today. I wonder if it's just a move on normal volume. Uh, no, no. This definitely seems abnormal, at least from here. The volume isn't abnormal, at least from what I see on the daily. Uh, yeah, not on the daily, but it, yeah. Not but on the daily. You're it's getting spiking on the intraday. Yeah. Uh, how, and you know what? I wonder if we've even traded. How many shares have we? Yeah, we haven't even traded a million shares today. That's why it's not on my scanner. My liquidity filter is not is not filtering it. Uh, about 300,000 shares on the day here, so I'm not getting that spike. Interesting. Gary, by the way, nice job on your Apple trade there. Ring the register, baby. 8%, you no matter, oh. just a couple of minutes on that bounce. Great stuff there, Gary. Keep it up. Dun, dun, dun. Looking around, see what's making nice moves here. UEC, uranium stock. Whatever happened to that? It's made a nice little pullback. Uranium ever going to make a move? Uranium. See if this one gets out. Sideways action right now. Taking a look at the spy. Spy pulling back there from that 381.50s. A little bit of a trappy action there. And just looking for BTU to continue working for me. Could take this little profit here, but we'll see if we get back up there and just keep holding the pullbacks right now. Uh, UEC, LEU, URG. There's not much there. Aluminum and X. X going to give it to you. I was going to say, where's the X going to give it to you drop coming? I didn't put that one on. Bed, Bath Let's & Beyond. Stop. There we go. Jay Wild, oh. shout Bed, Bath & Beyond. Let's see what's going on here. This is one of those squeezer names. Wow, actually, this this definitely moving here. It's uh. only up to three bucks, but uh, having a decent day here today. 280 to 290, and then 290 to three. So two 10 cent legs here uh, on the. Bed Bath and Beyond. 
Anybody watch uh, the Avatar on the weekend? Don't tell me anything. Okay, I haven't watched it. I didn't feel like going to the movies for three hours, but <laughs> I can't handle those three-hour movies, man. Can we? Can we make? Can we make them like part one, part two, and I come back next week? Well, see, here's the here's what <laughs> I feel. So, so I I know what you're saying there, Myth, and some of these longer movies. Uh, I don't go to see movies in the theater anymore. Just I straight yeah. up, I, I don't do it. I, I I wait for them to be available. I watch them at home. A three-hour movie at home, that's easy to do, right? You can pause, do whatever you need to do. I'm I'm with you, though. Going to see a three-hour movie at the theater, it feels like your entire day is gone by the time you get out of there. I, I'm, I'm with you. Not my not my favorite. Yeah, it's a whole shift at uh, AMC. You know, that's what I feel like I did. I feel like I worked this. Um, but, yeah, it's tough out there. All right. Uh, I'm going to put up your chart for a second. Give me one quick second. Yep, here. You got it. I was just watching BBBY here just to see if we actually break through that three handle. This is a nice shout here uh, by uh, by Jay. Olivia saying Avatar was amazing. You know, uh, Olivia, I'm not surprised. Actually, this was recommended by someone else in the happy hour. I Avatar, the first one was all right. Um, not the hugest fan. Again, I'm just not a, a movie goer. Avatar does look like the big winter movie here. Good to see you give it a good review. Glad that you liked it. Um, that's good stuff. Uh, all right, let's take a look and see what's going on off the relative volume scanner here. VKTX, where are we at here? So it is trying to break that. Remember, this is a 722. Now, the first time that we broke out here, we actually did get a bit of a trade. It's come back here. This might actually give us another one here. VKTX at a pretty good spot here. Let's see if we can end up getting... I'm taking a look at the level two. Doesn't look like a lot of size there at 722. At least not anymore, although it might be hidden. Uh, they've refreshed it a couple of times since I've brought this up. There it goes, 722 gone. Let's see if they bring in more stock here to sell at 722. Oh, that bid is holding. We might be able to push a little bit higher here. VKTX. Got the day or the intraday high here at 744. Yep, 744 high here. VKTX going here. Nice little move through 722 here on VKTX. Good stuff. You guys were talking about AVYA earlier. Did I see that AVYA rip, ripped earlier? Yeah, it sure did. Wow, here's another one of those penny stocks. And this is one of the ones that you guys play here. 15 cents all the way up to 38 cents. Oh, my God, more than a double. Um, and it's it's actually still up pretty good here. So retraced a lot of this move. We'll see if this gets going again. Uh, really, I'd like to see this take out 24, then 28, and then maybe that 38 is doable. We shall see. AVYA penny stock won't trade this, but this one definitely moving around here. Definitely moving around here. Let's see anything else really new off of this scanner. I am gold at the highs. I saw D-Lo earlier here today. AVYA double bottom. Did I miss that? Was that on the daily? Oh, I think this is what you were talking about here. Ooh, interestingly, on this gap here, Crow, look at that. 32 to 50 on a potential gap move. Looks like we tried to do that earlier, but we're rejected. Interesting, interesting setup here, AVYA. Oh, so you're looking, I see this intro. This is what you're talking about right in here, right off that 21 cents. I gotcha. I gotcha, Crow. Thank you. Then it looks like it actually is curling here. We'll see if we can end up getting this rolling. Take a look at AVUI. Or this is the one we did that 
Um, exclusive on, still holding that 114. Looks like the pre-market was the highs there. Bankruptcy in process for what, Influence? Bankruptcy in process for AVYA? So far, nice little breakthrough is 455 here. I'll be honest though, it's been hard to trade anything that's financial related. The bank charts have looked so bad recently. Hard really to trade these, although I guess if you're trading SoFi, it's just a day trader there. Just a day trader there. Bank okay, so you're saying bankruptcy is in process for AVYA. There you go. Considering bankruptcy uh, news last week. Gotcha, thank you very much, folks. E2 Computers, Influence Studios, much appreciated. Great assist out there today. Great assist out there today. VRNA really can't break out of the sideways channel here. So we'll see if this gets moving. Apple at the highs still, Square pop into the highs, and Amazon pop into the highs as well. So we're getting a lot of moves on some of those bigger caps here. Uh, market just moving with the market, market at highs here too. Yep, just climbing yeah. the wall of worry right now. That's what you're doing. Climbing the wall of worry. Yeah, literally. It's climbing the wall of worry. It's going to keep climbing. And one of the things they can tell you that is when you're getting growth names, you're getting value names, all moving in one direction, Overall market move seems like stocks are very highly correlated right now. All right. So much to do. So much to see. What's going on out there, guys? Unity staying strong. Snow staying strong. Whew. Trying to see if my uh, Sark can hang on here. If not, I might have to take the profits in Sark. Could have ran to the profits this morning. Was looking for the 70, though. So just trying to let it work. Richer and wiser. Awesome handle, by the way, saying sell the rip by the dip. According to triple D stay focused. Is that his, is that what he's on right now? Mitch by the sell the rip by the dip. Cause I, I'm with you there. I, that's, that's it seems life. like all rips are getting sold. I, I, to me, that makes a lot of sense. That's the life we live in right now. That's, that's right. The, the bear market. All right setting this up here lots to do lots to do today guys i do have something to let you guys know about later today um we will be releasing an outlook from adam johnson into 2023 you know one of the things i think everybody needs to start thinking about what are they thinking into 2023 uh 23 right what should we be focused on where will we find the opportunities? Stay tuned, team. We've got a great interview for you guys. That's going to be at 1 p.m. Eastern. Don't miss it, team. Don't got to go anywhere. Just stay right here after Benzinga Live. I'll get into it. Jay Rice pretty much giving a list of stocks that I'm not trading that I have not been trading. So if you're smart enough to trade this crap power to you, I'm not. Neither am I, Jay. I try to I try to stick with things that are more predictable. Uh, a lot of those names that you just listed there aren't. I guess Carvana would be the only one that I would that I would pull out of that group. Um, we've talked about that one as being a really, really good short.
AVYA on VWAP. Good shout, Crow. <laughs> Mitch got a lot going on right now. Mitch got a lot going on. I'm it trying, never ends, guys. I'm man. trying. It the, never the, big, ends. the big thing with me, guys, is that I I, I don't have much downtime, so I gotta get some stuff done. Sometimes. What's downtime? Yeah, I don't know what that is. <laughs> I, I I've forgotten what that is like. Um, but it's a good and bad thing, right, Ryan? Like you don't have to worry about if you're working or think about what you're working on because there's so much to do. You just keep rolling. But there's also the times where you're just like, whoa. All right. Well, uh, I got to catch my breath here. Uh, but that's how it is, man. I mean, hey, I, I, at least I don't have to worry about if, if there's things to do. There's always something to get done. Oh, there's right? always something to do. There's always something to do. There's some people that struggle with that, right? They're they're kind of like the opposite. They're just stand, standing around, right? Staring around. Well, that's not what we do here at Benzinga. There is no staring. It's just a lot of action. And then, you know, we roll with the punches. The only way we can know how. Jay saying if they turn Tesla green, we're really going to squeeze here. Tesla, we're, we're a ways away from green here. Green would be what? I like Almost it. Almost $4 from where we're at. So so one fifty. But I would agree with you. I'm just not sure if we end up getting that. I mean, we really need the market to take off to do that. Yeah, that just means that just goes to show me that all the trash would be moving if that would be moving. So um, to tell you the truth. I mean, when you look at different names like Roku, Zoom, those aren't getting too much of a lift. It's more like a Snow or a Unity that's doing well right now. Um, looking at ARKK, uh, shop, shop till you drop. You guys know I like that Shopify stock. Uh, long term, I'm even thinking about grabbing a little bit of this now that it's back towards 37. Uh, but I really wasn't trying to add some stocks in 2022. Um, I would like to have this one maybe 23. Uh, but looking at it right now, shop is getting a little bit of a bounce today. They're not a bad looking stock. Shopify. I think about Shopify is it's they're so good on delivery that I think in the long run, this is not a bad one to have. Um, if I had to think about what could potentially have some type of capabilities like an Amazon in the long run, I think shop falls under that category. Pulled back since that 44 move, found some support around 35s. Now back towards 37. We'll see if we keep making a move on the day. Five-minute candles. Look at that. Boom. Nice little move up. Uh, Crow's asking, what's in Detroit? The Benzinga headquarters is in Detroit, and we travel there for work often. I need to travel there more often. Yeah, you should. You should. We'll have some fun. Got to, my friend. I got to catch my man, Ryan. I haven't been able to catch my man. I know. Ryan. I know. You know, and I it's went, so funny. He's actually go. stayed <laughs> in the same place just at different times. How about that? Yep. That's how it is. That's how it is, Ryan. I remember Ryan was the, he was doing uh, those, you know, those kind of imitations that happen nowadays when you put out a content and then a man comes in in the same spot with the same outfit. Like, you know, like, look at me. I'm Mitch. Well, it was just, it was funny. I was looking at your picture. I was like, I've seen this place before. I've seen this place before. It was the hallway and the Saunders. Those are the Saunders, right? Saunders is a stock. I don't know how long, how long, how much further it will be a stock, but it's a stock right now. Yes, Crow. Yes, S -S Crow, I am. I am. I am definitely going to try and hit that frozen public rink that they have right outside the headquarters. You know it. Absolutely. Yeah, man, you got to hit it up, dude. Take take the camera out there, man. Go ask some questions. Well, I think what I might, I, I think I, I, was on an the idea. Street. I, I was thinking of an idea of how we could actually turn this into content and maybe something like teaching Aaron Bree how to hockey stop would make some good content. And we could have people ask how how he did something like that. We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll figure oh, it out. Oh, we, we don't have to ask. We can watch this. I want to see live action. I don't want to see no uploads. I want to see some real Live damaging action. See hits. if you can get it done. <laughs> I know. I, 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 I remember when I first tried to learn how to, uh, you know, just straight icy hockey stop. I'll tell you one thing. You might need some other skates in those those rentals. <laughs> uh, I'm bringing my skates. Crow's asking me here. I'm, I'm bringing my skates. <laughs> yeah, because those rentals, man, those things, those dull bl blades, not it's good actually, on ice. It, you know what's funny is that if you're learning how to hockey stop for the first time, it's actually better on skates that are dull. 
It's mm. actually easier to get used to the motion of pushing the skate outward, which is what actually makes that that stop. Uh, it's a little uh, bit tougher when the when the skates are all sharp and have really I, sharp edges. I can skate fast. Now stopping is the whole thing that Ryan needs to work ah. and teach us how. <laughs> I can skate fast. It's the whole thing about stopping. That's that's when it gets a little fun. Yeah, Voodoo is saying take uh, Ryan. I was gonna say take AB out there with you. Yeah, that that make for some good content, right? Teach him how to stop and get some skating lessons out there. That'll be fun. Let's do it. Let's we'll get it out there. I was even thinking about coming right now, but can't. I'll, I'll wait for it to warm up a little bit there in Detroit. I'll be there. I'll be there soon. All you got to do is dress right for it. You'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. I just, I, 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 I like to do stuff when I get there. I want to go out. I want to go do oh, some that, 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 The weather will not stop us from doing stuff. You can mark, mark, our, mark my words. ICCM showing some weakness now. Yeah, not being able to hold a couple of five-minute uh, wicks up there. They tried. Tried its best. Looks like it's coming towards VWAP. 363 but we'll see what happens on that one was it a bad one out the gates there got through the fours it actually had a really good move out of the gate a uh, really good move out of the gate and the, the reality mitch is that the day's not over right so as long okay. as it holds this and right now it's holding vwap area as long as it holds this it could actually make another move towards the highs and if we're able to take out 455 i mean who knows how crazy this can get if we look at the after hours yesterday this thing went all the way up to near 12 dollars right almost 12 dollars on the head so i know it's going to be harder for it to do that during the regular session but again huge move yesterday it might have another one here uh in this afternoon all right just catching in here trying to work on getting this release ready here for us today as we're going to put out how to pick high quality stocks from adam johnson going into 23 you want to know how to pick some high quality stocks well get after it come and join us today uh, 1 p.m. Eastern. Don't miss it, team. Check it out. What do you want to be looking towards into 2023? You don't want to miss the show. That's going to be at 1 p.m. Eastern. Uh, Judge, yeah, I, th I, I don't see any problem with that. I think the only thing that you cannot do is stream the content live. I think you will get in trouble if you stream the content live. But if you make a video showing it, absolutely you can do that. We appreciate that support. We appreciate that. Always. All right. Let's see what's going on with the spy. Spy's just still climbing the walls, but slowly but surely looking like it's slowing down. And I wouldn't expect this to be like just an overall rally. I still think we're still heading down, but we've gone down fast enough to get a little bit of a bounce, right? And I, you know, the other thing is I expect each consecutive day here to kind of be lower and lower volume, especially for the some of the bigger stocks, SPY um, type stocks. I feel like as we get closer to the weekend here, more and more people are going to be out of the office, away from their desk or on vacation for the Christmas holiday. Remember, Hanukkah already started. So this entire week is effectively a holiday week. So I, I just it, to me, it just seems like that's one of the, one of the other reasons why I've kind of dialed it back uh, pretty much almost to nothing here. Uh, ICCM was good today, but for the most part, I, I just expect a lot of these stocks, broader market included, to have a little bit lower volume until we get to the beginning of next year. That'd be my best guess. Scanner is really dried up. It looks like just kind of the same tickers um, over and over here. Don't really see much of anything going on. Um, not, not really, not really much. Kind of drying up here. The, you had mentioned that the spy kind of stopping here at, at uh, right after this rally. We'll see if we end up getting a little bit more juice here. Lower volume means bigger moves in most cases. A BZB, yeah, I mean, I mean, 
It depends, right? It depends. It depends what the share structure is of that stock. A stock with a huge, thick float, it's not going to move on lower volume days. It's going to, it might even stay pinned in some cases. But some of these other ones, especially if traders are bored and have nowhere else to deploy the capital, yeah, you can, you can definitely move those along. Uh, Muhammad is asking, so what time does the stream end today? We generally go to 11, right? We generally yeah, yeah, yeah. go to 11, so about 10 minutes here. I might, uh, Mitch, you look busy, so I'm going to try to stick on with you as long as I can here. Yeah, um, no but worries. Uh, we'll get, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to get you guys over to some education at 11. We got a nice uh, education stream to bring on. Awesome. Um, like always, guys, don't don't run. Education is what you want to be hearing, right? Here at uh, Live don't Trading with run. Ben Singer. No, no, it's the truth. I mean, some people run when they hear that word education nowadays. The truth is, is that that's why we do live trading, right? I mean, it's this is not a stream about, you know, hearing about Lamborghinis, mentioning about my Rolex that I just got. No, that's not what we're here for, team. Uh, what we're here for is to show that you can attack the markets in a processed approach and then try to find your edge, right? Maybe that's pairs trading. Maybe that's momentum trading. Maybe it's trend trading. Or maybe overall, maybe you're just here to learn a little bit more about investing, uh, taking an approach, swing trading, right? Well, you guys see us do that approach often. And just to guys give you a perspective there, about to get stopped out of that BTU uh, last little position here. It's right off the stop there. Um, so if it does hit here, I'll just get the rest of it out. Um, there, it just hit right now. Um, so all out of that BTU position, not... Not too bad on that one. Uh, we did have a gain. We're green on the day, but just very slightly because of the loss in DE. Um, but not looking too bad on these stocks. Like always, team, we're going to keep uh, pushing the limits and trying to show you guys different strategies. As we go into next year, one of the things that you will see more of is swing trading. I feel like we've done a yeah, lot of day trading on this stream. Next year, you'll see a lot more swing trading from me, sometimes holding as many as 10 positions sometimes. That's the way I like to approach it with my swing trades. I'm trying to work the positions, take some profit, maybe get into some new trades, use some of that day trading ability to get into some of those swing trades. So look forward towards some different outlook, how we take it, uh, an approach in our trades. And of the main thing here is that it's a process approach and that's what we want to teach you. So we'll also show you from other traders, from our boot camp education, what you guys can be learning from them, different process approach. And, you know, speaking of process, that's actually one of the reasons why it was so much day trading this year, Mitch. The market really didn't give us a whole lot of opportunities to swing things. Sure, there were some sprinkled in there, but for the most part, it was more conducive to day trading. It was more of a, a, a daily stock pickers market, a lot of chop, a lot of back and forth in a lot of these different names. You really couldn't hold things for extended periods of time. I'm hoping that 2023 gives us a change in that. I, and I, I actually am really hoping that we bottom and then move to that because that's really going to help us take some of these larger positions here. So I, I'm looking forward to it. We'll, we'll play what the market gives us, right? We're not going to force it. We're not going to fight the market. We're not going to fight the trend. We're certainly not going to fight the Fed. So TLO, we're all looking forward to it, man. We are all looking forward to the same thing. Mitch, is everything going okay? <laughs> Just working in the background. Man. I know, man. Your facial expressions are worth a million dollars. So, oh, I'm sure. ANTF going crazy on I'm, no I'm news. Using that same, I'm using that same monitor to like look at stuff. So I'm more like, hmm, I'm interested in there. Uh, let's take a look. What else is making moves? Despite ANTF, no, J Jay's absolutely right. ANTF, it is going crazy. I don't see any news either. Let me check the Twitter streets. Maybe this is like a chat room deal or something. ANTF. 
ANTF. Hmm. ATNF, excuse me. ATNF. All right, there you that's go. My, wow. That was totally my fault. Ah, you know, uh, I, was, I was looking at it. I was like, man, that's a, I'm a little dyslexic today because I'm not putting it in right. Ah, no, it wasn't me. No, it was me. It was me. It was me. Don't worry, it's halted, so it's not like we could do much there. But yeah, big, big, big move there. Well, I want to figure out why. Uh, somebody knows something that we don't know. A lot of volume came in there. Uh, sure One point one million there. Did we get news last night or something? No. Still looking, folks. Yeah, I see in some Discord rooms linked, but I'm uh, I don't know. Yep. Hashtag ANTF and then a Discord link. Don't see any actual catalyst here though, or any actual news. Good shout though, Jay. Good shout. So is this a reverse? That's what you're saying? E2 Computers from the 16th announces a 1 for 20 reverse. Did that go into effect today? I don't mm. think so. Reverse stock split. Those are the real yeah, fun must ones. must have. I must have. Yeah, 1 to 20 reverse yesterday. Thank you, guys. Another reverse split squeezer. Be careful, says Jay. I second that. That E2 computer's great assist here on this. Great stuff. I actually think I have an asset for that, but I can't remember where I put it. Great success. There we go. Great success. <laughs> great success, E2. Nice job. All right, Mitch, I'm going to get rolling here. I'm going to get back to my day job. I've got a lot of stuff here to do. I know you, you do it, the friend. same thing. I'm glad you're back. Glad we were able to keep the stream going while you were gone. Take care, everybody. We will be back at this again tomorrow, and we'll see. Uh, hopefully, we have the Z-Man back. But if we don't, Mitch and I will hold the fort down for you. So have a good one, Mitch. Let me know if there's anything else uh, that you need, and we will see you all tomorrow. You got it. You got it. All right. We'll see you, Ryan. Have a go, man. Appreciate you, you holding too. it down. All right. Getting Ryan out of here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm done with what I'm doing be here. So I got you guys. We'll pay attention here. Get you guys an outlook here to keep going. I'm actually going to bring these charts down. I'm going to go ahead and bring my other charts up to show you guys a little bit about what I'm seeing in the market. And we can take a look to see if there's any big movers or not, right? So energy overall, getting a little bit of a bounce back today. You guys can take a look. One that I like overall is Halliburton. Halliburton have an amazing day today. I do think this is a really good one to watch. Had a nice little pullback towards the support of 36. Now starting to bounce back. This is one that I'll be looking for in, even into next year. Halliburton doesn't look bad at all. We'll look for this to continue. Slumber Day is another one that I'd give you guys long term i do like these overall slb having a nice little push now we'll look for this hold back to hold maybe the 51 pullbacks that's where i'll be looking for some pullbacks on this one maybe you get a pullback towards this support towards 50 90s but right now big move up there slumber j not having a bit a bad move today xom nice little move back up towards 107 32s as you're seeing some oils names getting a little bit of a bounce oxy we talked about it. Would it kind of hold this 61? Start coming back here. We'll look to see if Warren adds, or will he wait for his 57 price level that he's done so in the past? We'll see what happens there. ATNF uh, finally opening up there, and it pulled right back down there towards the VWAP. Hit the VWAP 390. 
We'll see if it gets back up there towards 493s. Not something that I'd be trading, but just wanted to call it because I know that you guys were looking at it. All right, looking around, what else is making moves? Basic materials having a good day. Silver leading the way there. Steel behind that. So, yes, you guys are seeing some good lift there in some steel socks. I was even looking at this hoodie, uh, cheaper stock, to see if it comes back towards five. Gives you a little $5 pop. But X, X, nice little day there. We'll see if this can continue making moves. Steel Dynamics is another one here to keep on watch. All right, let's keep pushing here. We'll see what else is going on. Uh, CMC topping out there. Steel plays doing well today. Coal plays, of course. BTU stopped me out on this last pullback, but I could get right back into the name and look for a push right back towards 2940s. Going to leave it alone for right now. But SPY overall starting to top out here. We'll see what happens there. Moderna having a decent day there. Let's go towards the next sector, which is financial services. Financial services, banks having a little bit of a bounce back. JPM, right? JPM staying strong. Was at the support, bounced a little bit here. We'll look to see if it can get back towards 134. Goldman Sachs had come down really fast. I think a little bit of a bounce today, but I think this is one that's being short-lived and selling into the rips. And of course, we'll look to see some other where if there's getting a buy into the dip. Technology was more of that kind of buy into the dip. We'll see what happens there. Are uh, any of these stocks really holding on here? JKS is one that we've been looking at for a while, now starting to really get moving. I actually really like this name for a swing on, and that would be on JKS. But let's see if this can get back above the 54 important price points. If it gets above 55, it's going to be looking really strong. Jinko Solar, if you're looking for something that on the longer term, kind of like this one. Another thing with JKS that I liked is that I was looking around. A lot of different services agreeing with me on JKS. So we'll see if this can keep pushing. This was a Zach's number one. This was a good outlook there from Market Structure Edge. Um, of course, Tim Quast. Um, and then I saw it on uh, different outlooks there for JKS on other platforms that were also looking at JKS as a potentially good stock. It's been getting a nice little volume lift. Let's see if it gets back above that 1216, which was a high of 5523. If we can do that, we'll be looking good. All right. Uh, we'll see what else is making moves there. We also got a Canadian solar stock bouncing a little bit. Array technology trying to make a little bounce back. First solar, of course, if this one can stay strong, I feel like the overall sector can stay strong. It's been the leader. We'll look to see if it keeps pushing. The NPH has been pulling back fast as of late. Spy just chopping around there. We'll see if it keeps coming back towards the VWAP. Industrial is behind that. Uh, not much leading there. I can take a look at metal uh, fabrication, but you guys don't watch too many of these stocks. Uh, I know that much just because you guys don't bring it up too much. But like an ATI, look at this one. We'll see if this one can come back up through this level. Metal fabrication stock doesn't look too bad. And we'll look to see if it can get back up there towards 31. This is one I'd keep on watch, ATI. All right, what's going on out there? Uh, Blaze. We're getting a question in the chat for some Blaze action. Uh, let's take a look there. Uh, back Blaze. This is infrastructure, software. There's a problem with software names is that I think software names overall are just not going to be in favor until the environment changes. Clear example is an Adobe. If Adobe is not going to be in favor, what's to make you think that these other kind of uh, software names are going to do well? So I need to see names leading that are going to do well first. And then I can catch these. Like, look how Salesforce is just keeps coming down here. I'm telling you, the software applications, those are the tough area to be in right now. And in the infrastructure ones, if you look at some high cap names, right? You can take a look there. Microsoft is one of those. That, th that chart doesn't look good to me on the daily. It's coming right back down, rejected that move towards the trend line. Now right back down there towards 241. Oracle. This is one you want to see start getting strong if you think that one's going to make a nice move up. So catch some of the bigger names. Wait till you see those really move, and then maybe you can catch these. But if you're just trying to play the bottom and play hero, can't blame you. Biggest thing that you're looking at is this volume pop. Can you get back above the volume pop day? 
The first level to look for is a high there of 554. You want to be closing up above that to show you that really the bulls took control on that recent volume move and are starting to move it back through the six. And then you're looking above towards 650 and seven. All right. Target audience uh, is larger, different type of industry. They are in cloud backup. Yeah. The big thing here though is a, a lot of times industries get put together, right? Sectors and industries get put together. I know that a lot of people think about this in Blaze, like, okay, well, it's completely different than let's say a Microsoft, right? But a lot of this is the spending that goes into these, right? And so companies right now are determining what kind of softwares we need, what softwares we can do without and cut some costs, right? So with that outlook, software is, is the first area where people will think, do I need to have this? Is it a must? A lot of this you'll start seeing will get cut off. A lot of this will be that, hey, maybe it makes sense to cut our software before we cut our employees. Or some companies are choosing to cut employees and keep the software. So just keep in mind, it doesn't mean it for everything, but something to watch for when you're thinking in software. Is it recession proof? Will companies have, have to have this or is it more an expense that can be cut? All right, it's 11.03. We'll keep going. Team, if you guys got a stock, throw it up in the chat. We got a lot to keep going through. We're going to go ahead and play a little Benzinga Pro trailer, and we'll be right back. Breaking news. U.S. Treasuries. In the case of nuclear or radiological fallout, people moving around the Texas area. RTW retail wins hitting a high of 45 cents. Seeing some chat room mention on RTW retail wins. Coming up at 2 p.m. Eastern Time today, the federal budget balance for January. Earnings after the close today from EFX, Equifax, MGM, MGM Resorts, NTAP, NetApp, and U.S. Newskin, PS, Pluralsight, TRIP, TripAdvisor reporting after the close. Keep going here. I'm going to go ahead and look to get us on some education. Um, so uh, go ahead and I have uh, David Green from the Green Room Live. Um, we're going to go ahead and bring that on. That's going to start in just a couple seconds. Just go ahead and queuing that up here. Uh, let me get my man DG. DG on. You guys uh, know DG. He, he joins uh, Benzinga Live consistently um and I, what i like about dg is that he uses uh pivot formulas and so he tries to make things more non-discretionary right you don't want to be making too many choices when you're getting into trades so i definitely like that all right what i like about this also is this is from the august period and so what i like about the august period is that we were going through some struggles in the market so we can definitely learn from this. I'm going to go ahead and get it queued up right now. Uh, like always, we want to keep learning from our trading outlooks. Look back. When did we struggle? What did we do then? How can we trade moving forward? Let's go ahead. I'm going to pull this screen down, reshare for you guys, and we'll get towards the action here. All right. There we go. Sharing tab. Boom, boom. Let's bring this onto the screen here. Full screen. All right. Let's go. All right, you guys will hear a little bit of my man AB introduce David That's Green here, David does things. Uh, and let's get into the action. We gotta do it quick, but um, but but before we get started, David, just because we we most of the folks here will be familiar with you, but for, for those of you who aren't, give me give me the quick sixty second. Why should I care what you have to say? Why should I trust you? Uh, well, <laughs> that's a great question. <laughs> so, um, as Aaron said earlier, I have been trading for about thirty five years. Worked on a Florida New York Stock Exchange for 16 years, and I retired when I was 38 years old when Goldman Sachs bought our firm, which was, by the way, the worst transaction, probably in worst trade Goldman ever made. That is for sure. I think they paid. Wait, you're saying you sold you sold at the top? I think so. I think Goldman paid like six and a half billion for uh, our specialist firm, and that was really the end of specialist firms. Oh well, no wonder you retired at 36 and a half billion dollars. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, when I left the Florida <laughs> Exchange, you know, I don't know how to do anything else. I barely got out of high school. I didn't go to college. The only thing I've ever done my whole life is trade. So I started trading on my own. 
boom, shaka, waka, waka. And then about um, 10 years ago, I started teaching people how to trade. And then me and Pete hooked up, who you talked about, about three or four years ago. And we really got into it when the pandemic started um, because we wanted, we knew that there were going to be a lot of people that were going to start to try trading. And I think we had 40 million new retail accounts open during that time. And I think about 39,900,000 of them went broke. So <laughs> we saw a need to try it, especially those of you who are in short-term trading. If we can get just a little, uh, give me some ones, guys, if everybody is short-term trading out there whether you're doing you know, multiple trades every day or day trading on an active basis, pop in some ones there. Yeah. And this is our boot camp. So we have some folks who are newer with us. Definitely yeah. like that, like that crowd you mentioned that has gotten into investing and trading during, um, you know, COVID. And I think a lot of people know in theory, right. It's smart to just add to your, uh, you know, retirement portfolio every two weeks when you get your paycheck and, it, and all that's great in theory. We're humans and we see, you know, other people posting the returns and think, oh, if, if he can do that, I can do that. And people want, you know, people are interested in the trading aspect of it. People are interested in, you know, maybe even if you don't need to do it, how, how you can trade for a couple hours a day and maybe help supplement your income, make a few extra bucks. Who doesn't want that? Yeah, exactly right. We had, um, and I have to tell everybody, let's preface this by saying that for a good couple of months, it was very difficult for anyone who was trading because we had such volatility. So what we did during that time is we cut our size down and we were a little more conservative and waited for things to move a little more. But I have to tell you, the last two months have been spectacular and it's gotten much, much better. And the technical analysis has just been right on for a while now. Um, today, I, I want to go over some trades. I want to share with you guys the technical analysis that we use. We had seven trades set up today, seven trades. We had six that set up yesterday. Um, I don't think we got stopped out of any today. But I want to give you guys as much as I can in the last little bit uh, that I'm here, that I'm here for you guys. One of the biggest things I always tell everybody, and my big thing about trading is what's between our ears, guys and girls, because the technical analysis I can teach anybody. Most people out there can teach you the technical analysis part of this. It's the easier part of it to learn without question. But how to get into the trade and once you do what you do once you get into that trade is by far the most important thing ceo of hobby lobby david green yeah that's me maravoon yeah i, saw I was that. just gonna I'm, say david i'm gonna i'm gonna hand it off to you i'll be yeah. hanging out though in the background so yeah. if you need anything just give me a holler but you guys are in good hands david knows what he's talking about <laughs> go do your thing so i always like to give uh a little money management lesson when we start these things because to me that is by far the most important part of what we do. And then we'll get into technical analysis. We'll get into trading. I got one order out there now, right now. Let me just take a look at it. I saw a lot of you guys post up Sava already today, right? Um, this was a nice FOMO trade. A lot of people usually get caught in these things, and they end up losing money rather than making money. You guys can see what this stock did today, right? Went from whatever it was, uh, $26 to $35, and now back down to $27. We'll talk about that. I'll talk to you guys about how we traded this today, what we were looking for. But a couple of things, guys and girls. How many people, and just give me ones when you get a chance, have been in maybe that one trade, right? That one trade that ended up costing you a lot of money. One trade that you can pinpoint in your account where you didn't get out of a trade and you got like a deer caught in the headlights and it ended up costing you 10, 15, 20, 30% of your portfolio. And let me tell you guys, we have all done this, okay? Anyone who is trying to trade short term has been through this where you had that one trade that just, you, you, you kicked yourself in the head when you were done with it, right? Everyone has. So one of the biggest things that I teach all my traders is, is to avoid ever having a big loss. I am swing. You've done that in all of them. <laughs> I hear you. Well, look, when I first started trading, when I left the floor, and all I've ever done is trade. I lost like $300,000 in two and a half months. And that was because I wasn't using technical analysis, right? I wasn't. I, I would just buy a stock because I thought I knew what I was doing and then keep buying it and keep buying it and keep buying it until I couldn't take the pain anymore. I'd finally get out of it. And then inevitably, and this happens to everybody, when you get out, it's usually the low 
we should be doubling up, right? But I wasn't using technical analysis. And it took me the better part of two and a half years to get that money back. And once I lost it, I said to myself, look, you got you to gotta learn how to do this. And the only way you can trade in my mind, and some people might disagree, is by using technical analysis. It's the only way you can trade. Uh, I'm going to show you some examples in a little bit. We have, I think we have like an hour, so that's good. Um, yeah, money management and trade management is the most important part of trading, Sabrina. What most traders will do, okay, is let their losers run and get out of their winners much too quickly. Give me a one if you have that problem, everybody out there, because that's probably the biggest problem that every trader has, right? They get out of their winning trades too soon, and they hold on to their losers forever. So one thing that we will never, ever do is average into a trade. And this is a trade, okay? If I get into a trade, I'm either going to be right on it or I'm going to be wrong on it. That is it. I will have a stop order on every single trade that I do. That stop order will depend on the price of the stock that we're getting into and what kind of trade it is setting up for us to do. Yeah, that, guys, that's everybody, man. Everybody, especially beginning traders, do that. The first thing you have to do if you're struggling as a trader is learn how to not lose money, okay? So I never, ever, 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 ever average into a trade. I do a trade, I get stopped out, that's fine. When you get into a trade and lose money, if you execute it properly, to me, it's the same as a winning trade. That's the bottom line. And by using our technical analysis, it puts the odds in our favor that we're going to make money on more trades than we lose. That's the bottom line, Okay. And if you make money on more trades than you lose and you have proper money management skills, you should make money. How many of us have had a couple, three good days in a row, and then one day we give it all back and then five times that? We've all done that too, right? So one of the big things that I tell all my traders, beginning, intermediate, or advanced, is you have to have discipline when you're trading, all right? This is not a casino. And... The only time we will ever make a trade is when the odds are in our favor of us making that trade. Second most important thing, guys, is to know when to stop trading, both when you're losing money and when you're making money. And this is another big thing that traders have. I'm going to go over BBY deuce. I will look at that. I'll show you how we traded that one today also. Yeah, guys, in a couple minutes, I'll share all my technical analysis with you. I'll go over a bunch of trades that we did today, and we'll take questions about anything that you want. Okay? So. I, I have people that I know that tell me they make money on 90% of their trades. That's great. Does that mean you're a successful trader because you make money on 90% of the trades? It should. But I have seen people make money on 90% of their trades and lose 10 times as much as they made on that last 10% of their trades. Right? Happens all the time. So two things that I do, right? If there are days where things aren't going well for us and I have three maximum loss trades in one day, I'm done trading for the day I turn off my machine and go home. 99% of the time, guys, if you force something on after you're having a bad day, it's going to end up losing more money. Well, probably almost 100% of the time because our first thought as traders is I got to get back in there and get that money back. That's just how we think, right? And the second thing, and give me some twos now if you've ever done this. How many of us have turned a really nice winning day into a losing day? Give me some twos, right? Everyone that I've ever talked to that trades has turned a nice winning day into a losing day. And that, my friends, is the worst feeling in the world. At the end of the day, you say to yourself, how the F did I do that? How did I do it? Right? Another rule and stick to this. Everybody should have a goal as to how much money they want to make. Okay. That doesn't mean you force trades on to try to get to that number. Right. And I'll go into this in more detail at another time. A couple of things I'm going to offer you guys before I finish here. That'll be spectacular for you guys. All right. But I will never turn a winning, a winning day into a losing day. And if I want to get more micro, I'll never turn a winning trade into a losing trade. And I'll teach you how to do all that stuff too as I go over some technical analysis and some trades. So if you ever hit your goal, and let's say you're a 100 share trader and your goal is 100 bucks, what I tell everybody in my room is to leave. It's usually not going to get any better than that. We had six or seven trades set up this morning. We happened to miss a few of them by a penny or two, and I'll show you that too. But 
there are a lot of days we have two, three trades in the morning. And again, guys, nobody makes money on every trade that they do. Okay. I want you guys, and again, this is just my personal opinion. Avoid anybody who tells you all they do is make money. Okay. Avoid anybody who tells you, I promise you, you're going to do this and you're going to do that. There are a million guys on TikTok that have discords and everything else. And all they do is make money and they never show a losing trade. The best traders in the world are going to have losing trades. Okay. So if anyone tells you that they don't, they're full of shit and they're lying to you. Pardon my language. So when we get to our goal, and if I'm trading 100 shares and my goal is 100 bucks, great. All I do is win, 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 no matter what. God bless you, Jessica. <laughs> I know what you're saying, right? So if anyone in my room hits their goal, I urge them 150% to please leave. Get out of here. Tomorrow's another day. Time is the most precious commodity in the world, and we ain't getting it back, guys and girls. So how nice is it if you have a day every once in a while, by, by 10 o'clock or 10, 15, you're done. But guys in the trading room, if you see anything setting up, please let me know. I think we're just dead right now. Quite frankly, guys, we're dead in this market until 2 o'clock when the uh, Fed make, announces their minutes, and I don't think that's going to be a big deal anyway. But we'll see what happens with that. So anyone who hits their goal, right, you should get out of there. If you're going to straight stay in trade, if you give back 20% of the money that you're up, Turn off your machine and go home. The reason, guys, BBBY2205, let's take a look. BBBY2205, that is our pivot point. I love it, guys. Let's get an order out. And I'll explain to you guys what I'm doing here. And then I'm going to go over a bunch of stuff in a few minutes. Yeah, there's a little lag I'm noticing. 2205. So I'm going to put an order out. Guys, I trade the markets live with all my traders all day long. I have a real interactive broker's account. Okay. Let me show you guys that. Hold on a minute. Mm -mm. This is my real interactive broker's account. I am up $1 today. I have $26,200 in it. And every time we make a trade, I post it before we get in it. Again, everybody's responsible for uh, pushing their own buttons. Disclaimer, disclaimer, disclaimer. But I'm one of those people who sits with my traders all day long. I have some, what I consider the best traders that there are in my tr private trading room. I only have about 50 people in it. So it's very, very private. But we have skin in the game. I wouldn't tell anybody to do anything that I wouldn't do. Again, everybody pushes their own buttons. So let me explain a little bit why we're looking at BBBY, right? And one thing that we're gonna avoid guys and girls, and once you become part of our family, we will never have anyone get caught in some of these meme stocks. How many people, and again, guys, be honest, this is like a psychiatrist meeting. How many people are bag holding in some of these stocks that they caught got caught in, like maybe uh, a ZM? I'll just give some examples. Uh, a ZM down from 306, a Doku. I have a lot of people that come to me that are stuck in these stocks that are never going to get out of these holes. It's just not going to happen. So... One thing that we will do is avoid anybody getting in trouble like this, right? You look at a stock like a firm, and it was $176. Did anyone in their right mind ever think that this stock would go from $176 to $13? Ever? No way. So everything that we do is purely based on technical analysis. I will never get caught in any of those things. I'll trade them. We traded Best Buy today. It was one of our best traders today. Um, I'll trade them all day long, but we're not going to get caught in any of that stuff. And again, this is just if you're a short-term trader. One thing I will say to everybody, if you're a longer-term trader, and this is a discussion we can have another day. I know, be, be, be Bed Bath & Beyond, I always call it Best Buy. Um, if you're a long-term trader, as Aaron told you guys when we start this, started this whole thing, you keep contributing to your 401k, you're going to be fine, especially if you're younger, without a doubt. So, Okay. Let's go over some of the technical analysis I use. We'll get to individual stocks. Actually, I'm going to give you all the technical analysis that I use. And after I do that, we'll go and show you some of the trades that set up. I'll answer questions about any of those trades. Again, we don't claim to have the gospel. All I know is that our technical analysis gives us more winning trades than losing trades. And we get more out of our winning trades than we do on our losing trades. 
And that's something that I can talk to you guys a little bit about also. So here's stock Best Buy. I mean, <laughs> Bed Bath & Beyond. Let's go back to the beginning of the day. All right. So here is Bed Bath & Beyond from the beginning of the day. Okay. Well, before I do that, let me give you all the technicals. And I'll type them in so you guys have everything. There we go. And you'll know what I use. Whether you want to use it or not, that's fine. All right. Uh, can I type over here? I don't think I can type. All right. So just listen to me very carefully. We use a nine exponential moving average, a 15 exponential moving average, a 65 exponential moving average, and a 200 exponential moving average. Those are all the moving averages that we use. Then we have what we call pivot points, and I use relative strength. That's it. That's all my technical analysis. That's all I need as far as finding trades that's set up. That's all we use. And what I'm looking for by using my technical analysis, very simply, is when something hits a line. That's the easiest way I can explain it. So everybody got that with the moving averages? If it's something that you two to use, 9, 15, 65, 200, relative strength, and pivot points. Give me some ones if everybody got that so we can move on. Good. Pivot points are automatically calculated, Dave. Okay. So we all use think or swim for charting. Everybody in my trading room, everybody that I teach, we use think or swim for charting. That's what you're looking at, right? So it's just an automatic setting. If you, um, uh, what the hell did I do? Hold on a minute. Ah. Hold on a second. Now we got all screwed up. Um, it's an automatic setting. Give me a sec here, guys. It's an automatic setting on Thinkorswim. You can just click in your charts and hit studies and edit studies. And you'll have 80 million things that you can put into your uh, charts. Okay? So you can find it in there. The reason we all use Thinkorswim is because I love it, number one. And we all want to be on the same page when we're looking at something. So that's why we all use the same charts. Okay. So let's take BBBY for an example this morning. So we have all our moving averages and all of our pivot points out here, right? So the way we're going to make a trade, guys and girls, and we have our order down here at 2202. I'll explain why we're looking at that. I'll try to make this as simple as possible because I know we don't have all day. Um, we are doing a webinar tonight at 7 o'clock, guys and girls. We're going to be there for a couple of, couple of hours. Uh, and it's free for everybody. So I, I want you guys to come in there tonight also if you want, okay? And I'm also going to offer every person that's here a free week in my trading room to come hang out and trade with us. So if anyone's interested in that, and before I finish, remind me to give you the links. You come, you hang out and trade with us for a week. You can come starting today, and we'll hang out for a week, and I'll go through all this stuff with you guys. We just don't have no, that much time. Hold on. Someone posted in my room. Myrna. Take a look. Short at 161.15. I like it. Let's put an order out, and I'll explain why I'm doing this, guys. I just wish we had more time, but we're going to have a couple of hours tonight. So 161.15. We'll put an order out. Myrna. I am not a big trader, guys. You know, I do 50 and 100 shares. I'm here to teach all my traders how to do this. Uh, my PL doesn't make any difference to me, up, down, or sideways. None whatsoever. It's all about, yeah, I'll give it to you before the end of the, uh, before I'm done, guys. It's all about what my traders make. I'm never going to make or lose enough money in my trading account to make any difference. So, all right, I still like the Sava. Let's leave that for a minute. Let me just check the Bed Bath and Beyond, make sure we're okay in that. And then we'll start talking a little technical analysis. Still good in Bed Bath and Beyond. Okay. So, here's what we're looking for when we come into the morning and trade. First of all, my morning starts. I usually open the room about nine, so about nine, about seven thirty. We come in at eight thirty. We have our morning meeting, and we start looking at all the trades that we're going to do for that day. Um, we have scanners that we have scanners that look for stocks that are moving the most by dollars amount and percentage amount, and then we have a group of stocks that we watch every single day: our Apples, our Bobas, our Netflix, Nvidia. In addition to that, we want to be where the action is, right? And today, BBBY was where the action was. Right. So we made a couple of trades in this. I'm looking to make another trade if we spike down a dollar from here. 
If we get down to this 2205 level, let me just show you guys my orders for the people in my room so you see what we got out there. Okay, good. So what I'm looking for using the techn technical analysis, guys and girls, is when something hits one of my lines, to put it as simple as I can. Um, some are more important than others, and we'll talk about that a little bit. But when something approaches one of my lines, either going up or going down, that is telling me where I want to make a trade. So this morning we were watching Bed Bath and & Beyond, and some people had it short, some people didn't. And the stock moved up from 25 to 30. And if you guys notice, we had a pivot point right around the 29.50 level, right up here. Okay. So when a stock is going up that far, that tells me if it hits one of my resistance levels, that I want to make a short trade in that stock. Okay. I want to make a short trade in that stock. And you see what happened when it hit that level, it went about 40 cents above it. And check this out. We went from 30 to 25.70 down, what is that? Four and a half dollars in about two minutes. So when I make a trade like this, okay, yeah, and look, even if you held it today, you're down seven points on it. And one of the important things I'm talking about, PP, is not to get caught in these things and to learn how to trade them. I'm going to show you Sava today that's set up for a bunch of good trades. And it was up at like $35, right? And I think now it's 26. Let me look real quick. S A B. So people who aren't educated, okay, and run into stocks like this. And I got to tell you guys, the biggest volume was all on this upside when people were running in and buying this, right? The stock went from whatever it was, 25 to 35, okay? And more people were buying it than selling it. It's down $8 from there. You don't think people are still stuck in this if they don't know what they're doing because they hear someone say this is going to $40 or $50 or $60? Right. This was a beautiful uh, trade setup where it told us it was going to start going down because of the relative strength. And I'll go over that in a minute. But that was a beautiful short trade that set up. We call it a far from moving average trade. It was absolutely perfect. Then we made a trade when it came down and hit our trend line and it bounced the dollar. And then I think we made a trade when it hit our 30 minute for the first time at 28 and that bounced almost a dollar. Now we're coming down to this 2660 level. Do we still have an order out in that? Let's look at Sava. Hold on a minute. All right. Do we like this 2660 level, guys? I kind of would have if we got right there. Another rule that we have, guys, when something comes very close to hitting us, I'm probably going to cancel that order because if it comes down there the first time, chances are if it hits it the second time, it's probably going to go through that. So I'm going to cancel my order for now. Let's see if we get the bounce off here. This just hit our 65 EMA. So odds are, guys, and again, everything is about odds, okay, that we're probably going to get between a you know, 30, 50, 60 cent bounce from here. But it didn't quite hit my level, so I'm going to cancel it because I don't know if it's going to hold or not yet. Very important rule. If something comes close to one of our trades the first time, chances are I'm going to cancel it and then wait and see what happens. And I'll go to a longer term time frame, right? Let's go to a 15 minute. And we have 2601. That's our 30 minute. Our 30 minute EMA. Let's go to a 30 minute chart. And we have 26. So there's a, a few important levels around 26 in this Sava that it needs to hold. I'm going to pass on it right now because I just don't like the stock and it's been up too high. Let's go back to the BBBY. Guys, I'm trying to give you as much information as I can before we get out of here. But I don't like this trade anymore. I mean, we had an order out of 26.50. I think it exactly just hit 26.41. So let's see if that would have worked. So my goal in this, let's say we bought 26.50. Okay. I'm in the trade. It's a $26 stock. If it gets to 26.80, I'll sell a portion of my trade. If it gets to 26.90, I'll sell another portion of my trade. And then I will hold on to the last little bit of it and see if we can get up to this resistance all the way up to 27, 50, 28. So I always want to hold on to 25% of my trade so that if it keeps going in my direction, I'll get a lot more out of the trade. And that will negate a lot of the losing trades that you have, right? Uh, guys, give me a bunch of ones if you're kind of following what I'm talking about here. Everything we do is just based on a stock hitting a line in the chart. 
That's it. So this next bar right now is going to tell us whether this is going to go up or down from here. If we get a red continuation bar down, it's going to go lower. If we get a green little green bar up on top, it's going to go higher. So the next spot on my chart, I think we have a big lag here because I'm not seeing these ones for like five minutes, right? The next spot we have on our chart, which I really like, and I would be an aggressive buyer in BBBY, is our 200 EMA. And that is around $24.40. That is down $2 from where we are right now. So I'll tell you what I'll do in that. Okay. Let me just get rid of that. Uh, we'll get to individual stocks in a little bit, guys. I want to give you as much of the technical analysis as we can. Unless you guys would rather talk about individual stocks than me trying to give you some actual trading techniques. You guys tell me. I'm okay either way. Yeah, you can do that, Jeff. Absolutely. We have someone in my room who's an options expert also. Yes. But the way we do it is not unsafe because we're trading. If I lose a certain amount, I just get stopped out of the trade. Right? So our level is 2440. And I'll do a couple of hundred shares if we spike down to that level because I really like it. 2440. All right. Oops. Look, guys, I just made a mistake and bought 200 shares at the market. <laughs> Whenever you have a mistake, guys, and you notice it, get out of it immediately. Don't try and trade a mistake because it ain't going to work. <laughs> I wanted to put my order down at 2440 and I bought it at the market. So let's put it back. Would you rather talk about individual stocks? I'm okay with that. BBBY twenty four forty. Yeah, you know what, guys? Is my stuff not updating? I think it's not updating. Oh, I'm on Saba. That's why. Duh. <laughs> yeah, BBY was the 22 level. We missed that. So forget about it. Yes, we have owned on that. Saba is 24. Let's put that out and be aggressive down there if we get there, guys. A couple hundred shares out to buy in Saba at 24. Go back to BBBY and show you a couple of trades that set up and how we execute. All right. So our first trade in BBBY, guys, we got short at 30. Okay. Now we're watching the stock. Uh, I wish I had balls to play like too scared with big loss potential and options after playing for 30 years. No, there is, there is no, guys. Jeff, there's no big loss potential in what we do. Every time we make a trade, we're going to put a stop order in every single time. So if you're wrong on an option, you're going to lose money, aren't you? Yes. Right? It's the same thing. Okay. So we shorted this at 30. Now we're watching the stock, guys, and check this out. Can we get rid of that nude HD best adult dating site? Unless we want to talk about it a little bit. <laughs> guys i've been to that website it's not good don't don't go to that website all right we're being corrupted okay so question why did we short at 30 raja can anyone still hear me all right good the reason we shorted at 30 is because we have a technical pivot point telling us to short at 30 so that's why my chart is telling me to short at 30. Okay. Now watch this, guys. We went from 30, guys, down to 2350. Now check this out. We had a 200 EMA at 2350 right here. I think we happened to miss this by a penny, but I want to use it for an example. 
Our moving averages go in. Um, could you get the stock to borrow? I think or swim. I couldn't. Uh, I don't know, Jay. Some people couldn't. Some people couldn't. Yeah. Our moving averages, ladies and gentlemen, go in order of strength. Okay. Nine is weakest. 15 is a little stronger. 30 is stronger still. 65 is strong air. And the 200 EMA, guys, we call the Great Wall of China. When I have a stock go down $7 and hit a 200 EMA, this is a spot to be very aggressive. Again, we'll be very aggressive with a stop order. Okay. So when this hit 2350, I wouldn't have given this more than 50 cents because it's a $23 stock. So we're in at 2350. And this is how I want to show everybody to get the most out of their trades. If I'm in at 2350, I sell stock at 24 for a 50 cent profit. Bring my stop up to break even. Never turn a winning trade into a losing trade. A lot of times what people will do, and tell me if you've made this mistake, you take some profit, you let it go to break even, and then you end up losing money. This, if you stop doing it, will make a huge difference on your P&L. Okay? How many of us have been in a winning trade? Give me some ones that we let turn into a losing trade. I bet almost everyone in here has done that at one time or another, right? Wow, we're still getting inundated with this uh, nude HD XYZ chat. Someone tell me if you guys can still hear me. Guys in my room, can you hear me? Ah, there we go. Thank you, guys. DG yeah, is always reason, so much like fun to stick guys. around with. <laughs> right. So one thing we will never do. Just turn a winning trade into a losing trade. Never, ever. 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 A gigantic difference on your PL, guys. And girls. Almost getting you guys the best thing alive. That's coming up next. Stick around, Both team. We got a lot for you out. guys right here Great. on so Benzinga. We'll be getting AB to join us. In just cents, a few don't get out break even like like always, losing team. 50 Hit the like button. You've wiped out that trade. This. You have now wiped out your winning trade, right? Here's how we get the most out of our trades, guys and girls. I sell some for 50 cents, that is 24. I sell mm. some for a dollar, that's 24.50 right here, okay? I am not going to get out of the rest of my trade until it hits some resistance. Okay. All right, so it hits some resistance here at about 26. I'm not going to get the whole thing back up to 27.20, but on the last little part of my trade, I'm getting $2.50. Boom. Because here's where it told me to get out. There right? you go. Always want to take a profit on every trade I get in right away, 50 cents. Because you know why now, guys? I can't lose money. I like the it. The best feeling in the world is when you get into a trade, and now you know you cannot lose money on that trade. Boom. But I think that's perfectly said there by uh, DG. I'm actually going to pull that off now. But honestly, it can't get better than that. And I think that he says it perfectly there. Um, I do this a lot in my trading. I'm always looking for ways to get into the green. And then from that point on, just let the trade work, right? Like always, this is what we like to do as traders. And I talk about this all the time on live trading, just letting the trade work for you, taking some profits at that point, you can't lose. DG knows this. One thing that he clearly sees is that he's not always going to get you know, the high accuracy that he expects. So what he looks for instead is some quick profits. He takes some quick profits and let the trade work into his favor, sometimes giving him that big gain, right? Well, that's how he likes to take his approach. And that's why I brought you that from our boot camp. Like always, check out our boot camps. They're so great team. I can't say enough about how much education and value you get from these. A lot of people miss them. So that's why we're bringing them back to you there from David Green, The Green Room. Check it out, team. All right, now AB is coming on. Like always, we're going to get you guys over to Benzinga Live next. I'll let AB join here and take the show. What is up, y'all? Welcome back to Benzinga Live. Mitch, happy I'll to have you, you back, man. Friend. How you doing? Doing good, man. I see you in the hometown, man. I got to catch you over there. We got to go to the Cardinals game sooner Yeah, this later. summer, man. This summer. You missed it last year. You could have came and seen Albert Pujols one last year. Right? I, I mean, trust me. Yeah, you still got, I, Wainwright. I you still got Wainwright this year. 
I, I know I know year. a guy. I know a guy that's near in St. Louis that works with Aaron Judge. You and I okay. are going to meet him up and 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 go check out Judge, do some hitting. How, what do you think about that? Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm excited for that. All right, Mitch. sound bad. I'll see you, my friend. Have a good one. Yeah, we'll see you later. We'll see you at uh, uh, Stock Market Movers, right? Yeah, I'll be back on in just a little bit. Sounds good. All right, y'all. Let's go ahead and roll that intro. Get Benzinga Live going. I'll pop up my my Benzinga Pro when we get back. Uh, In the meantime, please smash the like if you have not already. This is Benzinga Live. Spencer Israel and producer A.B. What's up, everybody? How are we doing? Someone told me buy high, sell higher. So. Let's get Matt Hammond on the show. Talk to my POs. Jake Ujasic from Trend Spider. We have a breaking news. All righty, guys. Just checking out the S and P 500 right now. We're looking at the daily. Let's pop over to the five minute real quick because we were. Ripping for a sec. I mean, I'm not ripping really, but I mean, shoot, for the past week or so, it feels like ripping. Uh, and then we gave up those gains, came back down here. Looks like we were trying to break back to even starting to come back a little bit further. We'll go even down to a two minute chart here just to see what I'm talking about. Uh, so, yeah, like right here would be break even. We almost got back up there. You can see down about one tenth of a percent today. The Q's uh, down about a half a percent. So, so tech showing some weakness against the overall market. Uh, the Dow Industrial Average actually slightly up. The XLE is up more than a percent, which I love to see. So if I wanted to go long SPY here, this would be something that I, I'd be looking at is the XLE kind of trading back up here at least a tiny bit, up about one and a half percent today. So we want to keep watching the XLE. I mentioned on pre-market prep yesterday, uh, a couple of weeks ago, you can see this right here. Whoa, didn't mean to do that. Sorry, y'all. Let's go back to XLE. Uh, on the daily chart of XLE. And you guys know I'm not like the biggest chartist or whatever, but seeing how just XLE started kind of rolling over mid-November and really for the last month or so has just been trading down and you go over to XLF and you see that too uh, and XLF getting a small bounce today. So again, we're looking at the ETFs that cover largely the, the energy stocks, so oil and gas companies primarily, and then financial stocks is the XLF. So XLE for energy, XLF for financials. Um Seeing both of those tra- sell off at the same time historically is not a good sign. That's actually been like the one thing see- me seeing and the bond markets and stuff that has really kind of increased my fear the past uh, couple weeks about the market. Um, but again, today seeing some positive price action in those ETFs, seeing the SPY come back here again, um, I would I would love to see us break back into the green, maybe even fill this gap to the upside and see if we could potentially even uh, take out the high of days. Would love to see that on the S&P 500, just some positive price action, um, you know, and, 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 and we'll check out some more individual stocks to see which ones it looks like are starting to get some more love because right now, I mean, we're almost back down right back where we were uh, in in October. And I mentioned this on pre-market probably like it, it, it does seem like there are some things that are better right now in, in terms of the economy than there were a couple months ago. There might be some things that are worse, but in terms of like inflation, right? We check out the, the gas prices all the time, like are now cheaper than they were a year ago. Are you at home? Maybe. Yeah, I am. I'm uh, back home in the loo. I'm in uh, St. Louis for a couple of weeks before heading back to Detroit uh, for uh, just the holidays and whatnot. So it's good to be home right now. Hope everyone uh, able to get, you know, spend time with the family for the holidays. But uh, yeah, as always, guys, drop any stocks in the chat. If you guys would like to check them out, we'll we'll take some top stories from uh, Benzinga.com. Elon Musk actively seeking for a new Twitter CEO. He tweeted the other day that he thinks there's no one that really can do the job that wants the job. Um, I don't really know what that's saying about his good friend, Jason Calcanis, who has said that the Twitter CEO is his, his dream job. But I guess... Maybe he knows that him and Jason Calcanis are too similar in their views. I think Jason was helping him on a lot of stuff at Twitter and, and, and hasn't been great. So maybe Elon's trying to go a different route, but could end up there. Uh, would not be shocked. But looking at the Tesla chart here, wow, down another 5.5% today, just in the last few minutes, selling off either even further. Uh, I mean, I don't know. If this breaks one, if this breaks 140, I'd be... Uh, I'd be worried to the downside right now. And I have been worried about the downside of Tesla. I mean, I'm holding Tesla puts right now. 
Um, so I wouldn't be mad about it, but I also, I'm like long the S and P, but short Tesla, which is tough because Tesla is one of the top 10 weightings in the S and P. Um, but I do think there's a scenario and we're seeing that play out today where you, where you see Tesla kind of underperform, uh, the market. I don't know. I mean, I would love to see again, spy close green and Tesla close red today. That was taped. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah, it was. Uh, DCA is not a strategy. Yeah, Easy Mike. So we've talked about this. So um, for anyone like kind of newer to investing, watching DCA just stands for dollar cost averaging. Essentially, just putting um, money into either uh, an investment or a group of investments, like an ETF or a mutual fund, every two weeks or so, or, or any recurring investment. Right? Could be every day. Could be every two weeks. Um, or you know, it doesn't even have to necessarily be recurring. It could just be. You bought a hundred bucks worth of a stock. It went down 30%. You buy a hundred more bucks. Uh, and then if it goes up 15%, now you're break even. Maybe the math isn't exactly right there, but something around there. Um, and, and we've talked about dollar cost averaging a lot on this show before. I would say it, it, it kind of comes down to essentially uh, what your dollar cost averaging into. If your dollar cost averaging into like the S&P 500 or the overall market, like every two weeks when I get you know a paycheck, some of that money goes into an investment account that goes into an ETF. And I'm technically dollar cost averaging into that. Um, I think that's fine. I think that's a sound strategy and honestly, probably the best strategy for most, you know, just individual investors that don't want to actively manage their trades, just throw some money that when you get paid every two weeks into the S and P 500 or into the overall market uh, and, and dollar cost average over time. I think historically that's proven to be a pretty decent, uh, you know, investment strategy. And this is an, not investment uh, advice, by the way. But if you do that same thing with individual stocks, take, for example, I don't know, a, uh, a Tesla. If you've been dollar cost averaging into Tesla over the past uh, year. You've just been losing more and more money. It's not, uh, you know, it's not helping you. It's not, it's not adding any value to your portfolio to keep adding shares of an equity. You're just losing more and more money, right? If you bought at, and this is all split adjusted. Oh my God. This was, if you bought at 410, right. And then you, and the stock went down, you know, to 310 and you thought, Oh my God, like I'm going to dollar cost averaging in here. You bought more. All right. Now, now it gets down to 200. You buy more. All right. Now it's down to 140. What are you going to do? Buy more, wait till it gets down to 80 and then buy more. I don't know. Like, I would not dollar cost average into individual names, especially the more you know speculative a name is. If you're very confident in a name and it's kind of like a safer name and you want a dollar cost average to it, it it's your money, right? And 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 that would historically like be fine for a lot of stocks, right? Whether you're looking at like an Apple or a a um, you know Amazon or whatever, like if you have a name you love and you dollar cost average into adding you know to your position. And people say that all the time, add to your winners. So I, I don't hate dollar cost averaging by any means. I would not do it myself on any like speculative names, especially, you know, just because something's going down doesn't necessarily mean it has to come back up. Um, but dollar cost averaging into something like the S&P 500 or in, into some safer names is not, I don't think, the worst thing in the world. Um, all right, guys, drop some tickers in the chat if you guys would like to check some out. Otherwise, we can, like I said, flip through some of the top headlines on um, on Benzinga Pro. So one I saw uh, or on Benzinga was from Wells Fargo, ordered to pay a big fine due to some fees. We can go through this. Um, so maybe that's why Wells Fargo is trading down a little bit. Yeah, so Wells Fargo reaches $3.7 billion deal with regulators. Uh, there's some settlement going on there. So that might be why Wells Fargo is trading down a little bit today compared to the overall market. Let's go check back in on the S&P 500. I want to see if we can. Oh, we did. We broke green on the day. Oh, yeah, guys. And then quick rundown for the rest of the show. Options Mike will be joining us here in about 10 minutes or so. And then um, I believe a few minutes early today, Money Mitch will be, will be, will be premiering a video. believe at uh 1258 all right cool all right manny a wants to check out amazon i mean amazon was getting absolutely crushed the past like few days i don't i mean it, it's amazon like 
Well, I'm looking at a five minute chart here. It kind of it looks kind of good on the five minute chart, honestly. A little rounding bottom, come back up here to 88 bucks. Don't hate that. Do not hate that. I don't know. I want to make a trade. Someone, someone give me a, anyone got a good trade to make? Anybody? Um, all right. Let's take a look at Amazon on the daily chart. Chart does not look great. I guess you do have, I mean, kind of a lot of some support down. This will be a good test. It'll be a good test for Amazon. I think Apple's chart too doesn't, uh, Apple's chart looks kind of similar, I guess, but not quite as far, you know, through the progression, through the uh, pattern as Amazon's is. But yeah, I mean, I, I think if you wanted to take a stab at Amazon down here, you have some pretty uh, distinct stop losses, for example, right here at $80. So if you look at right where my cursor is, hit this point right here, $80, like the COVID low, go back here where you had a lot of consolidation back here in February, um, in February, 2019, sorry. So, you know, like if, if you wanted to buy Amazon down here, set a stop loss at 80, know that if it breaks through 80, it, it, it's probably still pretty bearish. But if it gets a bounce here, I, I don't like I'm still not as I, I told you, looking at the XLA, looking at the XLE, looking at the XLF, um, you, you know, has gotten me a little bit more worried than I have been. But again, today, those are, are, are trading up. I think price helps determine sentiment. The more the market goes up, the more people go get bullish. The more the market goes down, the more people get bearish, regardless of what's really going on in the economy, regardless of, you know, what might the Fed, what the Fed might do some months from now. People are super bearish right now. I don't know. Um, personally, I'm not there. I'm neutral. Um, I, I see multiple people asking for Moderna. So let's pop over that real quick. But oh, look at that. Amazon getting a, a little pop right when we start talking about it. Check out SPY. Uh, it's SPY in the green still, but barely. All right. But, oh, boy. Yeah, I mean, Moderna's tough because, okay, so I'll say this. So I like Moderna's outlook long term. Um, just as a company, I think the mRNA stuff that, that Moderna does is going to have like, I mean, we just saw the reason why Moderna is trading up so much right now or went from, a uh, hundred to two hundred in the past month or so, or two months, is because they put out good data or, or trials from a cancer thing. And, and this mRNA is so new. Like the COVID vaccine that Moderna put out was really the first widespread like mRNA type thing we used in terms of of, of uh, widespread like healthcare. And it's only going to grow. Like we're seeing them put out good stuff from cancer. So I think long term, Moderna has a lot of value. I like their story long term. But I think by a lot of uh, uh, metrics, the stock is still expensive now. So you're, you're definitely paying a high premium for a lot of growth. Um, and the financials, the actual like income statements and ratios are all kind of hard to read because the company made like so much money strictly from the COVID vaccine in like, you know, eight quarters, two years. And it's expected to decline, you know, a lot every quarter, you know, following that. So I don't really... I don't think have a good idea of if Moderna is super overpriced or valuable here, or maybe there's like deep value there. I don't know. I like the, the company's story long term because I I, I don't um, I wouldn't be surprised essentially if in 20, 30 years, you know, like all vaccines are mRNA and mRNA is being used to, you know, help all these different things, not just, you know, things like vaccines. So We'll see about Moderna. Again, I don't have a great gauge on if I think it's like super undervalued or overvalued right here. AB, can you check out Gush? Yeah, we can. What's going on? Um, all right, so Moderna is, oh, it looks like we also, I should mention, trading higher after Piper Sandler maintained an overweight on the stock and raised its price target from 214 to 217. That's not a big price target increase. You don't typically see $3 price increases on a, on a stock that big. A two hundred uh, plus dollar stock. Um, what did we want to check out? We want to check out. Gosh, also just how's the spy doing? All right, spy's back in the red. All right, not fun. Now we're not having as much fun anymore. Um, is Tesla still? Oh my god, yeah, Tesla's still down more than five percent. Gush. All right, so Gush is the bullish uh, leveraged ETF for oil and gas. Uh, always with the leveraged ETFs. I mean, the charts just look really wonky because there's like these reverse splits and whatnot. 
Um, but let's zoom in on the daily. I mean, I think it'd be – let's look at USO. Let's look at um, XLE. Yeah, well, let's get our next guest about this option, Mike, to, to look at these charts. I mean, I like I said, seeing the financials and energy roll off at the same time was scary because you typically only do you only you typically only see that when the market's really worried about you know a, a true recession. Um, but we are seeing the XLE and XLF both trading up today. I'm not saying one day you know really matters that much, but it at least like at least that that's better than them both trading down again today. So. Um, I would I would be just continuing watching XLE and or if you want to watch Gush, if you want to watch watch the uh, leverage one and see. And that's kind of how I'm watching the XLE, just basically being like, all right, if energy is trading well and doing well, the market's less worried about a, a global recession. If energy keeps selling off, oh boy, you know, watch out. So I don't know if I knew that, like if I, if I knew if Gush was going to go up or down from here, trust me, I wish I did. Then I'd have also a better idea of what I thought the overall economy and markets, you know, like heading towards. So um, your guess is as good as mine chart wise. We'll ask Mike what he thinks, but um, I don't really trade the leveraged ETFs, honestly, all that often, unless like, you, you know, if, if for whatever reason you were super convicted on something like, you, you know, um, oil or KOLD, you know, you wanted to go like super, oh my God, what the hell is going on with that? All right. See like Natty Gas, big pop today. Oh no, not big pop. Opposite of a big pop. Big pop in the inverse ETF for Natty Gas. Sorry about that. Why is Natty Gas uh, trading down so much? Why, 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 why? Let's go to LNG. Oh, LNG is not even trading down. Now. Someone, someone, someone's got me there. All right, guys, I see my man Option Mike hanging out in the background. So without further ado, let's go ahead and play Mr. Mike, our very special intro. When we come back, we'll be running through charts uh, with Mr. Options Mike. As always, if you guys have any stocks, any trade ideas you want us to check out, drop them in the chat and we'll get to them. But without further ado, let's go ahead and hit that intro and bring Mike on the show. This is Ben Zinga Live. Spencer Israel and producer A.B. What's up, everybody? How are we doing? I'm Someone told me buy high, sell higher. So. Let's get Matt Hammond on the show. Talk some IPOs. Jake Wojcik from Trend Spider. We have a breaking news. Mr. Mike, how's it going? Happy uh, Tuesday? Is it Tuesday? It's Tuesday, AB. How are you guys? I am good. I am good. How are you? Hanging in there, man. Getting over COVID. Happy to be uh, back up and operational. Oh, nice. How was it? Oh, just, you know, fun. You know, the gift that just keeps giving. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, Mike. So we've gotten, uh, I think, a little bit, the market's gotten a little bit more bearish since the last time uh, we've had you on. Do you have any charts you want to pop up? What have you been watching? Um, yeah, let me put up the uh, spy here. I've actually you know, got a couple of trades to manage, too. Some options, actually, if you want to help me manage them. Sure. I mean, the market has definitely changed, right? So, you know, we talked about, here's the chart of the SPY. We have this nice little upper range we were holding in with the 100-day, and we had this downtrend coming in that we came up and we tested, and we failed on it. And, you know, the Fed is not our friend, and that's what you have to realize. At this point, the Fed is no longer a friend of this market. The Fed is tightening hard into a recession. Whether we're in a recession or not at this point, we, you know, we could argue that back and forth semantics. But the market is certainly sensing there's a recession coming. And if you actually look at what's going on, the market's acting like it's going to be a lot worse than the quote unquote analysts and these big banks are saying. The banks are saying it's going to be a very mild recession. The market's starting to act like this is going to be a big deal. And, you know, the Fed is, is raising rates and selling bonds into it. And we've never kind of had this before. So it's going to be very interesting to see how this kind of plays out. Yeah. And sorry, I, I'm just noticing right now kind of on some intraday action. Uh, Chris Woods mentioned it too. We're getting a bounce on the market right now. Most of the big names, Amazon, Apple's, are, are getting a little bounce right now, and Tesla's just still trading down. I mean, if you, are you watching this slide in Tesla right now? Are I you mean, worried? Yeah, you know, I mean, worried. I mean, Tesla. I mean, Tesla's Tesla. I mean, this is a lot to do with you know what's going on with Elon right now and the. You know, what's he doing over with Twitter and, and is he avoiding Tesla? I mean, Tesla has some problems going on, right? We talked about it. they have a lot of competition coming along online, not just with like names like Mercedes and BMW, Ford and GM are rapidly ramping up. 
everybody wants to get into this space in a big way. Uh, their delivery numbers are dropping. You know, they are. But, you know, his distraction with Twitter is, I think, what's really kind of polarizing shareholders here. And, you know, the market is getting dumped. Uh, how low does it go? I've been talking for a while now that I think it comes it's into a support zone. We'll go to a weekly chart, the best way to see it. You know, from this 150 area, which it's now in, into, I think all the way down to 130 and then maybe even 120, you can see back here or back in uh, the last second half of 2020, we had created this nice big base here on this chart. And that's really where it starts to come into the support zone. So if you use 130 as a general guide, that might be where it finally finds it. Remember, a lot of volume traded here. So there's a lot of people in there that are, you know, in here that are holding it. This is where they'll want to defend it if it's going to be defended. But, you know, that's an ugly looking chart, isn't it? You look at a five year chart, that's pretty damn ugly. Yeah. And I mean, I don't know. It's, to me, like the more people are talking about trying to play Tesla to the downside, like the less I think it's actually going to like if everyone, all retail, you know, traders are out there trying to buy Tesla puts and make a bunch of money right now. Like, w w what do you think, you know, could happen from there? Do you think Tesla could bounce or just kind of consolidate and crush some people I out? Or I mean, for me, it's getting very extended down here to the downside, right? But it's been weak, weak, and weak. When the market's strong, it's shown weakness. Like you said today, when the market was bouncing, it was not participating in the bounce. They wanted nothing to do with it. Um, you just have to let it find support, you know? And, and it could be one of these things, you get a couple of inside days, lets things catch up, and it goes down another leg again. It's just, it's just one of these things with this name. It's, you know, all the EV names are getting hurt for the most part, and this one's getting hurt the most. And... You know, the PE is down to 55, which is still a little bit high, but nothing nearly like the 169 it used to be or, or higher. So, you know, it's, it's just you have to wait for it to find its footing. And maybe that'll happen if Musk announces he hires a CEO for Twitter and he's going back to Tesla full time. We'll see. Yeah, 100 percent. I, I think, uh, you know, we will. I, I'm curious to see Tesla's price action on that. If they do it, if, if Twitter does announce a new CEO, what Tesla uh, stock does from there? Because I think when he did that poll the other night on Sunday, some people were thinking Tesla was going to open up, you know, up twenty bucks yesterday, and instead it was up a little bit pre market, then ended up giving up those gains, yep. and and the market kind of went with it. And they were buying calls hand over fist on Tesla yesterday, thinking that at some point in the day you come out and say, you know, the, the people who voted they have it. Today he came out and said he, he was convinced that the poll is not accurate, so it's, it's no longer valid. <laughs> Because there's right. too many bots, so now he may redo it, but only blue check marks. People who pay for the blue check mark and vote. I mean, oh, man. It, it is, it, you know, this is just Elon. He's mercurial, right? This is this is who he is. Bottom line is, you know, he's either going to remain CEO of Tesla, or if this goes on long enough, the board eventually is going to kick him out. Not that the board is not loaded with people who are loyal to him, but when the board starts getting sued by people, by investors. They're going to protect themselves. So either he's going to come back there and stop this with this distraction with Twitter and put a CEO in, or at some point he's going to face the very real possibility that the Tesla is going to hire a different CEO and make him a different role. Yeah, and I, and I know, I mean, it, it seems like Twitter has been implementing a lot of policies that it's had to walk back. They tried to Twitter tried to implement the policy the other day that you couldn't, you know, promote outside links, and then right. it came out that that was actually against some EU. Uh, regulations and Twitter could be, you know, subject to all these fines if they're still operating in the EU, but have these policies. Um, that's a good question. Easy, Mike. What's the average PE of some other auto companies? Let me get, uh, I'll take a look at that. Mike, do you have any... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I was talking about that yesterday, like across the industry, right. Whether you're looking at, um, so let me, let me take a look at Ford. Let's see, go to the, the Ford PE for Ford is 6.3. Uh, yeah. Um, let's go to the peers real quick and see. So PE for Tesla, 46. Toyota, 10. General Motors, 6. Uh, Honda, 8. A Neo, or no, sorry, that's not Neo. Lucid, wow, it says Lucid's forward PE. Or no, sorry, that, that's not forward PE. Um, actually, Tesla's forward PE has come down to below 30, which is like the lowest I've seen it in the last five yeah, years. Yeah, I mean, the, well, the stock's been absolutely hammered. Right. So it's, it's finally coming in. It really, it's going to come down to now earnings too, as these names next quarter, what do earnings look like with it? You know, are they slowing down? Um, it's an interesting time here. You know, everybody keeps asking me, are we going to get a Santa Claus rally this year? And at this point I am kind of suspect that we're going to get much of a Santa Claus rally to the end of the year. I think the selling will abate as we go into next week, just because nobody will be around and, you know, the easier path of least resistance will be up. 
But when we talk a rally, you know, I don't see a huge rally taking anything out. I talk, you know, a very small rally, maybe back to 390 area. I don't think we're going to get any kind of big Santa Claus rally this year. This is the way the market's trading. There's, if you really look what's going on, there's just nothing but sellers in this market right now. The volume is not huge, um, but they're selling every pop. We were nice and green today, and then they came in. They absolutely dumped us back to red on the market today. And it's just a telling sign that they're letting retail investors or other things come in and buy it up, and then they're looking to dump into it. And until that action changes, we still have problems. And I think next year is going to be a very bumpy year to start the first half of the year. Yeah, and I think a lot of people are are, are looking at 2023 kind of cautious about what, what the outlook's going to be like, and especially with so much uncertainty with the Fed. I mean, we had Powell kind of come in last week and say, no, guys, like, don't get ahead of yourselves. We're still, you know, remaining course. We still need more uh you know evidence essentially that inflation yeah. has fallen even though there to me it seems like it'd be a lot you know a lot of evidence that inflation has come down um at least a little bit over the past six months or so but yeah i mean next year i am seeing mike we are getting a little bounce still on the spy we're back in the green do you want to go ahead and take a look at the um spy on maybe like an intraday chart and just kind of uh, let me know if, if i'm curious if we could potentially get back to the the previous high high of days um I mean, we, we, certainly, we certainly could. I, I mean, it was on its way up to there and it was looking strong. I mean, we, you know, you, you have to kind of look right now and say, you know, what's the overall action on the SPY? And honestly here, it's kind of putrid, right? Here's your high. It's not that far away here at 382. It's only a buck away. So we can absolutely take that out. Uh, let's, let's open this up to like a five day here. Let's do this. Oh, come on. What do I do? Hey, when I do something like that. Oh, I don't see it changes. Yeah, come on, update. There you go. Right. So, you know, we could easily bounce back up to the high of today. You can back up into this area. You could also even easily bounce up to 384 and retest the 50 day moving averages up in that area on the SP 500 on the daily. You know, these are not very big bounces here at this point. These would be kind of very small little bounces. We were down five days in a row coming into today. I mean, the fact that we dumped on the open, I was surprised. But we were overdue for some type of bounce in this action. You know, you're overdue for a green day. So, yeah, we have room to push up if the market wants to go. But overall, guys, I think we're stuck in a bear market in a weak trend. You know, your gap fill on CPI is all the way down here to this 272 area, right? Comes all the way back down into this, this area right around 273. And we haven't gotten there yet. We're just riding the Bollinger Bands down now. You know, look at the size of this move. Look at the CPI data from 410. Here we are. We came all the way down to 378. This is not a happy market. This is not a market that is happy or wants to be traded well. This is a market that is in trouble. And, you know, at this point, you cannot, you know, you have to have the door open for a possible retest of the lows. Um, I saw this the other day, and I, I can't validate this, but somebody on Twitter posted who I follow, and I, I generally trust that no market's ever bottom while the Fed is still raising rates. And we know they're going to be raising rates going into next year. So probably we haven't seen the bottom yet, if that's the case. Yeah, I, I think um, I guess just kind of to play devil's advocate there, I've I've seen the argument made from uh, some economists, at least that over the past 30 years or so, essentially every single time that the Federal Reserve has slowed the uh, pace of interest rates or done lower interest rates. So, you know, going from 75 to 50 or going from uh, a full, you know, 100 to 75 that has led to in that same cycle an eventual cut. So I think some people had seen that, uh, you know, the fact that we went down from 75 to 50 as some sign that the Fed was like getting ready to, to cut eventually. But like you said, not what, not what, that's not what Powell said. So some no. people got ahead of themselves. Even, I think even the bond market uh, got, ahead, got ahead of itself a little bit there. Um, if we think Powell is really, you know, kind of like steadfast in what he's saying, and he's not just kind of trying to jawbone and make sure that the market doesn't, you know, go crazy before we actually fix w what's going on with the inflation problem. Listen, there's no doubt in my mind the Fed's going to overshoot. It already probably has overshot the amount of interest rates they raised. They come out multiple times and they said it takes a while for the rate hikes to take effect to see the see the changes in the data. But they're not. But they're not in any way saying we're going to stop raising rates. So they're going to overshoot, and that's the problem. And then eventually, to your point, eventually they're going to have to cut rates back because they're going to overshoot. And they're going to help bring about a recession that's probably bigger than most people are going to want to see at this point because they're raising aggressively. Don't forget, they're selling bonds aggressively into this as well. So you have, you know, they're really aggressively tightening policy here. 
and eventually you're right. At some point they're going to cut, but I don't think that's any time in the next two to three months, barring some unforeseen event that sends the markets, you know, running in that direction. This is a second half of 2023 type things when they've gone too far and they realize they need to slam the brakes on. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I think, like you said, I mean, unless from now, you, you know, I said yesterday on, on pre-market prep, someone asked me what would be the bullish, you know, outlook from here. And I was like, the bullish outlook would be if you think Powell is, you know, essentially just jawboning and he's sitting there ready to cut rates whenever something looks, you know, slightly sketchy in the economy. And if something happens to where all the big banks start laying people off from now until February, and we already see Goldman laying off like 8% of their staff, or you start seeing some other cracks forming in the next few months, um, that would be, you know, as, as counterintuitive as it sounds, kind of the bullish outlook is that if, if by, uh, you know, some bad things happening, the Fed is essentially forced to cut interest rates quicker than um, th they're anticipating right now. Yeah. But until then, we have a horrible market. But if you're looking for names, there are still names that are holding in better. You know, the room we've been trading Boeing on off the last couple of days. And this this is just a pretty looking chart. If you look what's going on here, it's riding the eight day. It's curling up, trying to break out. It just, you know, it's caught in a bad market. It's just not getting that that velocity, that escape velocity that we're normally like. We're not getting moves like this, right? You get a little bit up. It's not going. But, you know, if you buy time or stock, this one actually looks like it wants to keep going. You know, there are stocks like that. I, I know everybody loves tech, but tech is an absolute wasteland right now. Cat, you have this beautiful upper flag with 225 as support and 240 as resistance at all-time highs. There's still some strength in this market in different areas. I heard you guys talking about energy. You know, I charted energy over the weekend. You have a little W pattern that's formed here on the daily chart that looks like maybe it wants to take off, especially if we take out the midpoint, which is up here at this 8650 area. There is strength in this market. There are things that still look good, but then there's so much that looks bad, right? And that's that's the problem. You go looking around underneath the coverage. You don't have to go far to look at names like Amazon, which is having a little bit of a better day today. But you know, this is after it put a new 52-week low in yesterday. That's just trying to hang out down here, and I'm you know not really much of a bounce. Everybody loves Apple, but Apple also not quite to a 52-week low. Just missed it, but you know, just an oversold extended to the downside bounce. There's so many names out there in tech that look difficult and dangerous right now. And, you know, we're used to these names leading. When they don't lead, we all seem to struggle a little bit more as traders. Yeah. And I mean, to your point, I mean, Apple's chart on the daily, I was looking at this on the show yesterday, just does not look pretty whatsoever, especially like oh. the more you zoom out, the more it looks uh, kind of om ominous. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know. We'll see. I mean, like you said, it, it's good to see some of these names, whether you're looking at energy Amazon get a little bounce today, but just because you're getting a little bounce today doesn't necessarily mean that's, uh, you know, a new price action or a new pattern forming. It, it could just be, like you said, a, a overextended move to the downside. We were down bounce. five days in a row. This market was overdue for either sideways or some type of bounce, right? You don't, you're not like we're selling off in a panic, right? There's no panic in this market. You're not seeing massive volume coming in. Yeah. Uh, and so outside of the, or go ahead, sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say, and outside of the names to that point, outside of the names, because you're not seeing that panic selling, outside of the names that like Tesla that are showing considerable weakness against the market, I don't honestly think it's like, I personally, like I'm not out there buying like spy puts and stuff down here just because of what you said. Like I could see, you know, spy trickling down, you know, further, maybe down two tenths of a percent here, down, you know, half a percent there. But it, it, it's not like we're seeing a, a, limit down type days and, no. and, and real but that's, fear. But that's been this whole year. We haven't had that kind of panic action all year. And it's been a very methodical, slow motion train wreck. Um, somebody at Arden's asking me about Costco. I mean, Costco, great, great company, but the stock is a mess. I mean, pushed up, look at this, gave this whole move back. You're on, a, you know, you're on this kind of 448, 450 area where if it can't hold here, you know, it comes back and it tests the 52 week lows at this point. It's just they don't want it. You know, a name like Costco, which you would think would be a safe name, because if we're going into a recession, we are in a recession, you're going to buy in bulk where things are cheaper, right, if you can. I mean, I personally think the big thing to watch for coming out of this holiday season is just how, I mean, I think there's a big difference what's going on, and this, this recession is going to point it out again. You know, we talked about a K recovery. This is going to be kind of a K-shaped recession where the wealthy people aren't going to care about it, and the people who are, are struggling are going to get absolutely killed in it because the interest rates are higher and they're all living on their credit cards. I think the auto industry is in for a shakeup here, and I think you need to be aware of that because 
people spent so much money buying these cars that weren't worth it. They overpaid and they're paying huge interest rates on it now and they can't afford them anymore. Right. So as they try to turn these cars in, you're going to have all these used cars coming in that are underwater. I think there's a lot of danger potentially in this market in the first part of the year. And I think that's what's really starting to scare the market in general. Yeah, I saw a thread about that on Twitter the other day about the used car, you know, repo yeah. problem that's come in. And I, I didn't really fully understand it exactly. But I think just like you said, the, the higher interest rates got people locked in. Uh, it wasn't just paid. that. You had to pay 5000 to $5,000 over retail price to buy the car, right? So here's your sticker price. And they were making you pay an extra $5,000 to buy it. You know, usually we go buy a car. We're, we're price shopping, right? We go around. We get a discount. We get a nice little interest rate. So these people are trapped in cars that are nowhere near the value of the car they originally bought. That's a problem. Yeah. Um, let's see. Bull Trader Co. saying, can you talk about the VIX? No place left to hide. So um, the VIX here has been a very difficult trade all year. And it's, there's, oops. what the VIX is basically showing is there's been absolutely no panic in this market, no fear, right? And you can see even on a day like today, the VIX is down. It's been down all, all week here, doing absolutely nothing for the last couple of weeks. Uh, there was an interesting point of view that this is, has to do a lot with the weekly um, options now and all the daily options that are being traded on this, that they're hedging this so much that it just doesn't go anymore because you don't get panic. For me, the VIX is always a gauge of sell programs. That's what I look at it most. When you have massive sell programs running in the market, that's when the VIX tends to really ramp and rally. And again, this year, we haven't been seeing a lot of those big sell programs. It's been a very slow, methodical selling as the market doesn't want to create a panic environment. The market wants retail investors to buy in. So to me, the VIX here is just not a great gauge of overall the level of volatility. The market is elevated, right? We've been remaining above the, the, the 16 areas since the beginning of the year. We're in an elevated environment, but it's not anywhere up in the areas people would think up 35 or 50. We just haven't been getting those spikes. And it's just not been a playable instrument for me this year. Um, I've been avoiding things like VXX and UVXY because of it. Yeah. And I, we talked about this on the show yesterday because someone was essentially like, why is the VIX like down or flat today when the market's you know getting crushed? I thought it was supposed to go up when the market's going down. And like you said, you'll really see the VIX go up when we see that panic selling, when you see that capitulation. Uh, and, and really, you have that uncertainty. Right now, it seems like there's little uncertainty. There's just the market's going down. That's it. The market's going down. There's not a lot of uh, you know volatility or uncertainty. Um, so yeah, I think a lot of people. There's just the best way to look at this right now, especially this this week so far. There's just no buyers, right? There's there's nothing but sellers in this market. There's no real buyers, and that's why we're getting this slow, very slow drift down because. You know, funds don't like to dump and create panic. So they'll they'll let it get bought back up and then they'll sell back into it. And that's that's how you're getting this kind of back and forth action on the on the indexes so much and it's so hard to trade. Honestly, I tried to short the NQ today. I got up nicely, put my stop in the money, and I got stopped out a minute later because it just it went down, then it came screaming right back up and took me out. And that's just the type of action we're getting because they're not really trying to create panic. Um, I don't know. It's just a tough market. I mean, you know, there's just different areas to be in. I know you guys talking about Moderna. I just want to remind you guys all something about Moderna. Um, that drug news last week, which was great, right, with, with Merck, but that's uh, probably a year and a half, two years away before that comes in. And that's a long, long time before we get another drug out of them, right? This was not even real phase two data. This was some kind of phase two accelerated little thing. So they have their trials to go through with this before this comes out. So, you know, while it's up today and it's been in play here, I don't know that it's going to front run two years into this move. Yeah. And that's where I stand with biotechs in general. If you're in on the stock and you get a catalyst or some news like that and it pops great. If it, uh, if it, you know, if you're late and you're buying a catalyst that like Mike is saying is two years away from actually, or maybe even way more than time than that, than actually bringing any meaningful if. revenue to the company. Yeah. If then, uh, you know, I don't know, I don't like that strategy. So just cause there are other people maybe FOMO buying, but to your point, Mike, I did want to kind of try to find, at least some stocks that might be showing some strength against the overall market. I mean, I know Netflix was for a while, but Netflix has been selling off pretty hard the past well, couple of weeks. I mean, um, it came out this morning that 9% uh, of their new subscribers last month came from their ad based subscription when that was supposed to be the new thing that led them. And so, you know, you know, this back to Netflix, it's back to being Netflix again, right? It's, it's back to the same old Netflix. Um, 
you know, again, you have industrials with some strength, you have energy still holding on. There was some strength in some of the steel names today. I saw that some of these are moving, you know, I'm working in my 2023 alpha form. I'll give you one hint. I do kind of like FCX with China reopening. China's got some bumps in the road here. They're going to get through. We're going to see an incredible experiment on what happens when you take a country with how many billions of people suddenly take away your COVID policies and uh, you don't have the hospitalizations or the medical to treat them and see how that goes over the next month or two. But once they get through that, I mean, if they're reopened, you know, copper always does well with it trying to fully functioning. So I kind of like that a lot. Yeah, copper, uh, you know, sometimes referred to as Dr. Copper, you can kind of look at copper and if it's going up, uh, people see that as a, a good sign for the overall global economy. And if it's going down, yep. people see that, but it's really not just copper. It's kind of, I, th- I think if you can look at like any, any, a lot of times those commodities and like metals kind of trade together. Um, but uh, Arden actually has a good question in the chat. If there's a huge rally in panic FOMO buying, will VIX go up? No, the VIX will go down. Okay. Why would the VIX go up? If there's FOMO and the people are buying, right? That means there's buy programs running there's FOMO. The VIX is going to go down. The thing to watch about the VIX is it's been doing this on Mondays a lot. It gaps up on Mondays because I guess they're repositioning everything. But, you know, watch when it always gets to the, out of the Bollinger Bands on the top or bottom. It has a tendency to revert back in. You can see this has been a trade that's worked for years. It gets out of the Bollinger Band and it just reverts right back into it. Gets out of the Bollinger Band, reverse back in. Gets out of the Bollinger Band, reverse, right? Um, and for now, you have this big support area at 19. So, you know, 1950, whatever, pick that area you want. So, it, you know, it's going to have to break that to get out of here. But if you get buying, the VIX should come down. Look at the VIX today. It's down. We don't have a lot of buying in the market today, and the VIX is getting crushed. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't pay much attention to it like I used to because it's just not a good indicator of what's overall going on in the market right now. But do you pay attention to it in terms of, of the implications the VIX has for, for options pricing? Well, options are obviously more expensive because the VIX is elevated. You know, a, a year a year ago, the VIX was trading down in the low um, teens or even the single digits at times, right? And options were cheaper. When the VIX is more expensive, options are being more expensive because implied volatility is higher. It's just a given. But it's not like it's ludicrous. It's not like we're talking 35 or 50. We're trading up in the 20 areas here. So it's just kind of gotten baked in at this point. It's, you know, it's like inflation when you go buy a burger at this point. It's just kind of baked in. This is the prices we've all gotten used to playing, to paying. Got it. Um, all right. Well, let's see if we've got any tickers flying out in the chat that anyone wants to check out. Um, or if you, uh, Mike, have any, any charts that you've been, been looking at recently? Um, you know, it's the, again, looking at them and saying, where do these things find the bottom? You know, NVIDIA had this real nice bounce, and I was very surprised by it. And um, Netflix pop, chatter. Netflix chatter, Microsoft's looking at them. Um, I wouldn't believe that one. Microsoft is just it's in going through the process of hell with ATVI. That's kind of like a, a bogus type of a rumor probably somebody threw out there. Uh, because if they can't get ATVI, they're, they're tied up in litigation for that. They're not going to go turn around and try to buy another large company, which they'll get back in the same boat with. So that's just not a good a, a, a good uh, chatter on that one. Uh, yeah. But NVIDIA is having a lot of problems here. And, uh, you know, as much as I love the company, their video cards are overpriced at this point, And they, they price themselves way too high, especially going to recession. And they've opened the door for competition to come in. Now, their, their cloud computing is doing good. But... Ultimately, I think it comes back and retests this 100-day, 50-day area where it held last time, and then we'll see if it holds. And if the market doesn't hold, then it's going to come back down. I mean, you know, A&D, which I love as a company, this this name just cannot find a friend right now, right? It's a great company, but, you know, they don't want it. Uh, they did, they just don't want it. So they keep selling it. In fact, one of the few semis I like right now, and this is, Again, another thing by 2023 is I think Taiwan Semi is probably one of the better companies to own as we go into next year. And I'm not in a rush. I'm going to point something out. I'm not in a rush to do buying for next year, right? I have one thing you week. If you guys find my report, it'll be up on Twitter by the end of the week. Um, I'm not in a rush to buy anything here because I think we're going to be able to get cheaper prices in the first part of next year than we are. But what you're trying to do right now for next year, guys, is you're looking for quality companies, companies you think they're good. I mean, here's what you need to know about Taiwan Semi. Even though it keeps coming down, they're constantly raising guidance. They're constantly beating guide- estimates. Uh, November was up, what is it, 50% year over year came out last week that the November sales were up 50% year over year. 
they make the best chips in the world. They make the chips for AMD. They make the chips for Apple now. They're building plants in the United States. So my worries about Taiwan and China are diminished. So this is a company that I would keep my eyes on, but I wouldn't be in a rush to buy it. I wouldn't be in a rush to buy any name until we get a definitive, clear idea that the market's finding a bottom. Yeah. That's and That's important I, here. 100%. I agree there, Mike. I'm seeing, um, yeah, as Arden's saying, he's bearish NVIDIA in 2023 as well. Um, Chris Wood wants to look at LVS, Las Vegas Sands. I haven't checked out that yes. stock in a while. LVS and Wynn both look really good. I, I, I prefer Wynn, but LVS is a good, just as good a good company as well. Um, they're up because of China reopening. That means Macau is good. And they're up because both them and Wynn just signed their 10-year renewal with Macau. That means they're there for 10 more years, which is good news because at times there was in question. The problem is here is we're going into recession and with COVID running rampant, it may not be so busy for a while. But remember, Wynn is their big profit center. When you look at Wynn and LVS, Macau, sorry, Macau is their big profit center. So when that gets going again, these would be great companies. So you're getting a dip here. Uh, you know, honestly, I would be wait and be patient. I think I like them back more down around the 40, 43 area, maybe even down to 42. But I think long term with China reopening, these are, are good places to try to put some money in. Yeah. And what about, I mean, just now that we're speaking of China, just checking out like Baba or, or some of the other K-Web, some other big China names. You know, these names are tough. Uh, you know, these names gap every day now because of the dual listings on Hong Kong and the Shanghai index. And they're affected by everything over there. Honestly, I, I, I still think that the China names remain very, very high risk. I think they're very difficult to trade. You're at the mercy of a government that on any given day will put out new new policies that may or be hurtful to, this, to these companies. You know, if, if you love them, buy them. But honestly, maybe down at the 50 days, a better level here on Baba. It's got to take out this 95. That was been a little bit of a wall. But, uh, you know, I, I don't have a love for China names, guys. Sorry, I don't. I just think there's... There's so much more risk out there. I'd rather play with American names that have business over there, like Yum, Yum China you can play, or like LBS and Win. Just my two cents. Yeah, don't apologize for not liking China you, names, Mike. No, we, 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 we want your we want your candid thoughts. You know, you know so, Starbucks. Um, Starbucks is another one you can play for their massive China exposure, right? You know, again, you're looking at a company that you know is not just about China. They have a lot more controls here, so I think they make for better companies to try. Um, I see another stock that I haven't looked at in a while, and, and I know we're running up on 30 minutes here, so this is going to be the last one, Mike, but uh, Lululemon, uh, um, Jay Rice is saying, is, is, has gone down to 310 from 375. I mean, this bad is earnings. a strong – Bad news? Bad earnings. Bad earnings. Where was your earnings day? 374, crushed, right? All the way down to 350, now down here. The earnings weren't that good. Sales are softening. Uh, unfortunately, and it saddens my heart that yoga pants are not as in vogue for Christmas as they used to be. <laughs> but I mean, you know, they'll they'll come back, right? I mean, they're still a good company. Let's just be honest with you. They're they're um, a good company. They're just in a rut here. And, you know, Nike reports tonight. We'll see what they have to say. Again, yeah, extended to the downside here. So if you're looking for a oversold bounce trade, sure, but. Again, I think most of these names are going to be able to get cheaper here in the beginning of next year. And that's the thesis I'm starting to work with. Got it. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, like I said, a lot of people kind of are, are um, you know, worried. And I think we're seeing the market worried too. I mean, even today, like we, we couldn't hold on to this bounce, starting to, to sell off again, checking out right. um, even even energy, starting to kind of show some negative price action from, from the uh, midday where we were at at around 11 a.m. So, just all, all kind of the same story of what's been going on today in the market. You, you um, can't chase moves in this market. If you teach yourself not to, you're going to trade better because if you chase, it tends to revert back in your face before you have a chance. Um, somebody asked about luck and coffee. They're still around easy. They're uh, traded over the counter now. It's uh, LNCY, I think is the symbol. On. This, I actually saw someone post on Twitter the other day. Stocks up like 30 or 40 percent over the last yep. year or something crazy. Um, all right, Mike. Well, I'm going to go ahead and drop your Twitter in the chat at options, Mike, if you guys want to go check out some more from Mike. Uh, always a great resource when it comes to options. Mike, any final thoughts, words of wisdom you want to leave us with on this beautiful Tuesday? You know, uh, we got data tomorrow in retail sales, GDP on Thursday, and on Friday we have PCE. So we're going to get some data this week that may wake up this market one way or the other. But the next week and a half are generally a tougher trading environment because it's very low volume. And just be aware of that. It's more of a grinding nature and buy time. You know, weekly options can be the death of you in this type of environment. 
hundred percent. Um, all right, Michael, enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. We'll chat. Thanks, we'll get you back. Yeah. Happy holidays. Happy holidays, everybody. If I don't see you guys before him. Look at that. Chris Wood says options. Mike is badass, and his Sunday charting is incredible. Everyone Thanks, go give Chris. him a follow. Thank <laughs> all you, right, man. Mike. Talk soon. All right, guys, that was options. Mike, again, Twitter is in the chat. Go give him a follow there. All right, let me go ahead and pop up my Benzinga Pro. We'll take a look at what's going on. Um, I got bombed out of my spy calls, unfortunately. What's going on? Oh, and of course, we're getting a bounce as soon as I get stopped out of them. Oh, man. All right. Well, I don't – okay, because the whole reason that I like the spy calls was seeing energy trading up today, but now that energy is kind of rolling over, and we'll look at it here on a five-minute chart. Um, and I know it's like people might – be watching me say this and do this and think like, all right, this guy's stupid. He's looking at one thing thinking it's going to like be the overall indicator market. That's not really what I'm saying. I think people are now. Um, I just think like the selling pressure has been somewhat exhausted. And, and you can see that with what we just talked about with Mike, like the fact that we, we haven't seen any like big selling capitulate, you know, it's just kind of been orderly to the point where I do think there are a lot of people looking to kind of get long. We saw that over the last few months when the spy went from, you know, 360 to 400 very quickly, there were a lot of people in that time frame um, that were, you know, essentially thirsty to get long. It went from 350 to 410. And now we've had this big sell off. Um, and if I start seeing energy come up again, even on the, on the intraday here on like the, the five minute chart, I might start looking some more at some spy calls just because honestly the, the saying goes, you don't want to short a dull market. This is certainly, probably the most dull market I've seen. I mean, we've gone through some, you know, bearish stretches over the past few years, but this has just been dull, not just bearish, but a, a, a very dull um, bearish. Let's go to here on the two minute on the XLE. All right. So starting to get somewhat of a tiny little bounce. All right. We're just going to keep watching this um, midday stall. I'm writing my Tesla puts from this morning and have some runners left. There you go. Uh, Chris Wood, Moderna, just incredible. Let's go back to uh, MRNA, up more than 5% today, crossing that 200 level, but starting to sell off here, it looks like a little bit. That's the two-minute chart. Let's go to the 10-minute chart here. Um, yeah, I mean, guys, I, I told you earlier, look, you're making lower highs now on the downside. Um, almost you've got this gap to fill. You've already had the catalyst. It goes, you know, buy the rumor, sell the news. I wouldn't personally be buying up here unless – you really love Moderna for the long term and you plan to buy some shares here and hold it for the, uh, you know, for years and years and years. And even then, I mean, like, you know, Moderna kind of pioneered this, this technology, the MRNA, but other, other companies are starting to, uh, you know, do more in that sense. Anyway, Moderna will still keep that first mover advantage, but um, going back to Lululemon. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if this thing's getting any sort of holiday bounce this year. Chart looks ugly. Still an expensive stock, and you got to think to it. If what's going on is real recession fears, people tend to, you know, ditch the names like Lululemon, the more luxury. You know, if we're going to true recession, more people might start buying their, you know, yoga pants from Target instead of Lululemon because it's a lot cheaper, right? No one wants to have to go to Lululemon and spend one hundred and fifty dollars on one pair of pants. Yeah, easy, Mike. I, uh, I, uh, I, I, like I said, I like Moderna long term. I'm just saying as a trade right now, when it's already up so much over the in the day, in the, on the day when it's already up so much over the past week, over the past month, whatever time frame you look at, I'd be scared that you know I, I'm I'm too late on that move, and then you, I'm going to get in right before the sell off. Long term, completely different story. Happy holidays to you as well, Manny. All right, checking out what's going on in my trades. Like I said, I got stopped out of my spy call. Spy continuing to sell off here. All right, uh, not great, Bob. Yeah, the XLE chart just looks kind of ugly right now. I don't really know what to necessarily do about that. Because like I said, I don't want to go short, right? I don't want to go long while energy is continuing to, to kind of sell off here. Um, ICCM building pressure wants to blow. Let's check it out. Holy cow. All right. I don't know. I was just saying like these, these medical biotech. I mean, you are seeing, I honestly, I don't see this as like the worst sign for the stock market ever that you're seeing some of these 300% runners and whatnot. We saw one yesterday with that uh, MTGL or whatever it was, but MGDL, 
and and the reason I say that is because like I'm not saying oh my god seeing some random you know Chinese biotechs up 300 percent is a great sign for the overall market you want to see strength and breadth but it is a sign that there's some speculation returning right that there are are, are traders out there whether it's traders investors uh, big banks that are that are willing to kind of make some of these more speculative trades right now just showing that okay maybe risk appetite is starting to increase. Again, I'm not saying, okay, just because we see this one biotech up, but it's a, if it becomes a pattern, that was one thing that we saw a lot in the lead up to the crazy 2020 markets was a lot of random you know, pre-market runners that were up 100%. And a lot of people pointed to that as, okay, these are signs of a market that's showing a lot of uh, you know, speculative activity. And it's not the worst thing in the world that people are, are more willing to take on risk to hold speculative assets because as, as economic you know, pressures and headwinds increase, people are going to be less willing to want to own uh, any of those speculative assets. China has bought a Paxlovid, a treat coat to treat COVID. Um, it's a Pfizer product. Keytruda effect on Moderna. Keytruda. I haven't checked out Pfizer in a while. I mean, all right. Everything's rolling over here now. Let's go back to the spy. Just more of the same, guys. Um, another thing we wanted, I wanted to talk about was this story last night. I kept seeing on Twitter about the Bank of Japan. Um, so essentially, the Bank of J Japan unexpected, unexpectedly widened its target range for the 10-year Japanese uh, government bond yields. So it sparked a sell-off in the bond and stocks around the world. Um, people were talking about it as if we were going to see like a limit down type day to day where the market was going to get absolutely crushed. And it hasn't really ended up being seems like that huge of a deal so far. Um, all right. So S&P 500 still hanging out in the green, barely. But yeah, I don't really know exactly, um, you know, why I mean, I get why. Okay, so it, it it was a sign that there was just more economic instability around the world. What was going on with this with this Bank of Japan halting the bond trades and all this? But I think people really overestimated, at least on FinTwit, the the, the effect that it would have on uh, the markets here in the United States. So again, not really seeing too much fallout from that today. So we shall see. AMC going to pump or dump in the next week. So we talked about AMC yesterday because we were touching on, uh, you know, the, the the Disney. Disney was trading down as well after Avatar. I don't really. I mean, Avatar, I, I guess, did sl is doing slightly worse than expected numbers in the in the box office than um, what they were hoping for. But to me, like, you know, it's. I guess to me, like, it, it's just tough because if you look at how much money uh the not even just amc but say like US, u.s movie theaters bring in in the box office on a weekend now compared to like three years ago there's a big difference there um and and to me that's like that's a terrible sign if the whole industry is showing weakness in terms of okay uh three years ago it was doing say 10 billion dollars revenue over weekend and now the whole u.s box office is doing five it's not a good sign, right? If you think about it in like the the gaming thing, if, if, if gaming revenue overall went down so much, you wouldn't want to be invested in the industry. So to me, I get that AMC is trying to do some innovative things to attract investors and, and to hopefully attract customers. But if the whole industry of watching movies at theaters is, is slowing down, not an area I would want to be invested in. And that's kind of what we're seeing with Disney and, uh, well, Disney, not as much like exposure to the uh, movie theater business, but you know, definitely to Avatar. Check out FedEx, please. Sure. FedEx uh, trading down a little bit today. Okay, they've got a conference call and Q2 earnings announcement today after the close. So, okay, actually, I didn't realize this. That's a... Uh... FedEx earnings can actually be a little catalyst for the overall market, essentially, because if 
if FedEx beats tonight and uh, saying like, yeah, shipping's really strong, it's it's a it's a good sign for the overall economy. People see that as a sign that okay, people are out buying goods, people are are out you know getting stuff shipped to their house, especially. Uh, you know, this time of the year is when you really want UPS and FedEx to be busy. Of course, this time of the year won't be reflected in FedEx's Q2 earnings report. Um, but I don't know. I mean, from a uh, just chart standpoint, the daily chart for FedEx does not look great, making lower highs all the way down here from from highs of 322. I mean, the stock's been cut in half. Uh, it is a stock that's, you know, probably a little bit more value based, pays a decent dividend, 2.7%. Um but yeah, I mean, I think like FedEx is, is is going to be dependent on what's going on with the Fed, what's going on with the overall market. So if you're bullish the economy, if you're bullish the stock market, FedEx probably not the worst play in the world down here. But uh, if you're worried, like a lot of other people are, about the outlook of the economy, FedEx is going to be, uh, you know, very much caught in the crossfire of a lot of those potential headwinds. Uh, trading Tesla short here. Let's go check out Tesla. I mean, Tesla seemed to catch a base today around 141. So I would just watch that level, like 140, 141, because if it drops below there, uh, then, oh boy, uh, could be some str trouble ahead. But okay, yeah, woo! Spy is catching a little bounce here now, finally. Um, thank God. Go back to the spy real quick on a, on a short. Maybe, what do you guys want to look at? Two minute time frame here? Stay true with stops, dude. Yeah, there's some suspect action tricks on the dark pool. Yeah, I know uh, a, a lot of people, you know, talk about what's going on with the dark pool with, uh, you know, AMC and whatnot. I've never really understood exactly all of that, what's going on there, to be completely honest with y'all. Um, but I am long uh, spy here. Calls are coming off a little bit here. I might, I might, I might double down on my spy calls if we get, if, if, if we hit back to 180. We get back to, or sorry, not 180. If we get back to 380, doubling down on those for sure. Um, let's see. Easy Mike in the chat saying they're still watching ICCM. Let's go back in and check in on that. Holy cow. I don't know what to tell you guys. Look, we're looking on a two minute chart here. This thing got up to more than 12 bucks. Sorry, it got up to 12 bucks earlier today at around, uh, or sorry, that was yesterday afternoon, yesterday after the close. Um, big sell off there. Got back down to about two bucks. Now we're back at four. Things a crazy mover. Like I said, a sign that some speculation is coming back to the market. If you want to participate in that speculation, go ahead. Just know that it's a it's essentially a very speculative bet. It's a risky bet. You're it's like going to the casino. You're not buying. Uh, you know, I, I don't even know if I consider that investing at this point. You're just kind of going to the casino and rolling on the roulette table. There you go. Break even at 340. You've already doubled my daily goal, so just letting it ride. There you go. I like that. Uh, Risk-free trades. There's nothing wrong there. Dave Green was talking about it on the, on the replay of the boot camp we were playing earlier. Uh, can't go wrong with risk-free trades. Another uh, – well, I've been watching Coinbase here flat. I, I mean, I this is one that <laughs> – look at it on the weekly chart. It's just ugly – I don't really necessarily like know if it's worth it to go short here. Although typically when a, when a stock is making new lows, it continues to make new lows. Uh, so certainly a lot of weakness showing in uh, Coinbase's stock. But again, I think like any, any good news whatsoever here in the crypto industry or, the, or Bitcoin or anything sends Coinbase flying. We saw Bitcoin spike up today to above 17,000 and now came back down a couple hundred uh, bucks down to, to 16,800. But let's go to Bitcoin on the five minute here and you'll, you'll see this little spike that I'm talking about from if my chart loads. All 
I don't know what's going. Oh, there we go. See this spike right here this morning. Oh my god, I don't know what happened there. Um, all right, I guess we're looking at Apple now because my charts won't cooperate. But so I guess to say something nice about Apple or try to be nice about Apple, as ugly as the as ugly as the chart looks right here, you do have some potential support down here. Um, I don't like the way this chart looks. I'd never really like when you can kind of see like a, see how, how like kind of gradual the stock's going up and up and up and up. And then, you know, uh, what was going on here? 2019, something happened there. And then you had a run up and then COVID and then boom. And look how much more drastic this move is to the upside. Look how much more severe that slope is to the upside. It's like, if this is a black diamond, this is the bunny hill. Uh, and anytime you see these black diamonds, like it, it doesn't matter that, yeah, the stock went up, kept going up from 130 to, cause that's, I mean, here's what happened. You're zooming out in hindsight's 2020, uh, you know, everyone can be looking back on it, knowing exactly. Okay. In, in retrospect, we should have done this, whatever. But here's the thing at this point, 135, when Apple got up here, People were thinking, oh, my God, this thing, you know, was was trading at 80 bucks before COVID. And we have this global pandemic and now we're at 140. This is way overextended. And I guess he would have been right for a little bit because we did sell off here in September 2020. But then we just kept ripping, made new highs, new highs. It was like this euphoria. Everyone got caught in it. Everyone was thinking, all right, these stocks really aren't ever going to go down. Um, and then, uh, you know, eventually seen the fed have to start raising interest rates because of uh you know because of of inflation now now maybe the feds gonna have to cut interest rates i don't know what's going on but hey apple from here if you think it's gonna dip below 130 might be some uh might be playing value to, to play into the short side. I, I I gave my reasons why yesterday I wouldn't really be crazy about the idea of buying Apple puts just because I think out of any stocks out there, Apple will always have bids at certain levels. Um, so you'd be more at risk of, of kind of getting those choppy sideways days with Apple, even on days where the market might be getting crushed. Um, of course, if you buy puts on the right day for Apple, you can make a lot of money. Um, but the spy is getting a bounce here. Let's go check this out. Um Oh man, as soon as I said that, it started giving up its bounce. Yeah, we'll see. If we, I want to see Spy take out, you know, some of these highs, like get above 381 real quick. Uh, and that would get me more bullish on the rest of the day or into tomorrow. All right, guys, we've only got a few minutes left of this show because Mitch is going to hop on here a few minutes early. Um, and start playing. Uh, uh, we're, we're premiering a, a, an exciting live video at 12.58 uh, p.m. Eastern that I'm real excited about. A, uh, a, a, a short form content, some video that Mitch filmed. Should be really fun. Stick around for that. Mitch is going to hop on here in a few minutes and we're going to um, talk about that. But before we, before we leave for the day, We'll take some more tickers from the chat. Oh, Easy Mike's looking at Coin Twenty Five. Sorry, let's go back to Coinbase. See, it's hard for me to like find levels because Twenty Five. There's nothing below. If we, if you break below all these levels here, there's absolutely nothing below. You know, Thirty Five for Coinbase. So it could be, you know, could get to Twenty Five. Sorry, that was on five minutes. Let's go to the daily here. But still, there's my point stands. There's nothing below here. So if Coinbase drops below Thirty Five. Uh, you know, certainly go there, but uh, like, I've, all, I've just been surprised that I think with the, since the FTX fallout and stuff like Coinbase, yeah, really in the last couple of weeks ha has been getting crushed, but still has been generally trading in a range. Not like you're seeing the, um, you know, company get absolutely like decimated overnight. So playing it to the short side with puts gets a little more difficult because you can get kind of crushed out if, if the, uh, stock just kind of, uh, chop sideways for a little bit. See people talking about XPEV. I haven't looked at X uh, paying in a while. Up 5% today. Let's go to the chart, daily chart. We are, uh, we're right at the 10 buck level here. So I don't know. I mean, Chinese names, you heard Mike talk about it. There's always more risk involved with these Chinese names. Now, you know, investing is often all, all about weighing where you're willing to put that risk and your potential returns. 
there is a, a, a case to be made that even though there's more increased risk in a lot of these China names, there might be more uh, potential upside to play as well. Alibaba from here, you saw how quickly this thing went from 60 bucks to like 95 uh, and people started FOMO buying that. There's a case to be made that Baba could have a better outlook over the next year or so than Amazon. I'm not making that case, but I'm saying someone out there could make that case. So if you're if you're thinking, all right, there's actually, uh, you, you know, maybe you're adding some Baba here to get some exposure because you're worried about the U.S. going into a global economy. Maybe the the or, or you're worried about the U.S. going into a recession, but the the global economy remains more afloat. If, if you think there's a scenario out like out there like that, that's possible. That might be a situation where you actually want to add some exposure to some of these Chinese names. I'm not right now because I think. I'm on Mike's team where there's just a lot of risk out there. I'd rather take names that uh, aren't as risky. Shelly, be nice. Um, I see Meta too. Can you check, please? Yes, we can check Meta. Um, so my my bold prediction of the holiday season that I've given pretty much every day on this show is that Meta will come out a winner, not necessarily the winner of the holiday season, but that Meta will have uh, you know, some strong sales on the Oculus. I said yesterday, I don't know with our current uh, market outlook, with the current uh, Federal Reserve and everything going on. I know, my Shelly, my point was just that just because there's just because there's more risk involved with the Chinese names doesn't mean necessarily like there's not upside. There's more risk, but there could also be potentially more upside. Um I don't think even if Meta does come out with great sales for Oculus, it necessarily means the stock's going to go up 5% or you're going to see bullish activity off of that. I don't know. Maybe if you're a long-term investor, you like to see that action. I remember going back to when I was a kid, um, You know, there were a few years where Apple really came out a winner of the holidays when iPods got you know, were one of the biggest gifts you could get out there. And I think a lot of people kind of were shocked by it, that how pop, you know, people saw iPods as kind of like a, you know, um, more techie type thing, not really that mainstream. And then all of a sudden, like the first Christmas they're out, boom, everyone got an iPod, everyone got an MP3 player. So I think you're, I think you could kind of see something similar here with Oculus. Could Facebook or could Meta stock get a bounce from it? Of course. Could the stock also not move that much? Cause people are more worried about uh, the overall outlook of the economy and recession fears than they are about the sales of Oculus. Of course, investors are going to be way more worried about the former than the latter. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what a company does or the uh, you know sales or earnings. If if the market's thinking we're heading toward a recession, all those companies are going to be selling off. So I don't know. Let's watch uh, FedEx's earnings tonight. Will certainly be give us somewhat of a decent indicator of of the economy because FedEx can kind of be seen as a metric. If a, if a lot of people are buying goods and shipping goods, it can be seen as a good sign for the economy. And conversely, if FedEx earnings tonight are poor. Uh, watch out in the morning because we could be selling off from that. I don't know if we have any other economic data coming out um, tomorrow morning. Let me check. Let's go to the economic calendar here. Tomorrow's the 21st. Um, not, re not really. Current account deficit uh, comes out tomorrow morning. Existing home sales at 10 a.m. Consumer confidence index at 10 a.m. So quiet, t quiet day tomorrow in terms of data. But again, I think the uh, uh, FedEx earnings will be a catalyst for the market. Okay, here we go. S and P 500 making new highs, or not? Sorry, not making new highs in the day, but taking out uh, those previous highs. Let's go. Let me go pull up my chart there. Let me check. What did I do with my? Damn, I got stopped out of my calls, and now they're ah, oh, they're back up. Should I buy them back? Um. All right, I see Mitch hanging out in the background. We're going to pull him on here in about two minutes. Um, let me check. I'll show you guys what I was showing on the spy chart here. Two minutes. Two minute chart. I was saying we barely took out this previous high. So I don't know. Let's see if we can get, if we can get back above here. I honestly don't hate the idea of playing it up to the, uh, you know, back up to 382 and then seeing kind of what the deal is there at 382. You're going to be, it's going to be a little bit more testy to see if we take out those lows or kind of reject off those. So watch spy here on these levels. 
I'm on the two minute chart here, by the way, you can see. So we're right here, 381. Um, let's see if we try to keep pushing higher. 381.08 right now. I would say we need to get above three. 381.25. So 381 and a quarter. We're at 381.05 right now. Um, before I start getting interesting, uh, interested again on the long side. Going back to the XLE, I mentioned this earlier. Oh man, I was saying this earlier. Why didn't some of you guys tell me? I was saying I was waiting to watch until XLE popped back up before I wanted to go long the spy. Um, I, I guess I missed that. We're on the two minute chart here, so I guess this is about 10, 15 minutes ago. But look at XLE. Uh, strong price action here. Ah, uh, do we go? All right, I'm going back long spy. Sorry, guys. No, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. 381 and a quarter. Oh, man, we're getting back up there. All right. All righty, guys. It is 12.58 p.m. That means I'm going to bring my man, Money Mitch, on the stream. Money Mitch, how you doing? What's up, bro? Did they let you back out of the day trading cave? Oh, they did. They did. I've got, I've got, <laughs> some, I've got some trades to be made now on, uh, hey. on my Robin Hood. So I made some earlier, actually, during the show. I'm kind of upset I got stopped out of these spy calls that are now back up. Of course, I, I always do this. I always set stop losses, and I always get mad that I, that I ended up setting those stop losses. But we'll see. Those stop loss hunters, I call them. Um, man, it happens all the time, uh, especially when you have uh, an order that's just sitting off at an important level. They take your order and they scoop it right back. Man, happens all the time. All one the thing time, that what? I, what one thing that I do is is that a protective stop, or you specifically want to get stopped out at that level? What's the? Can you explain the difference between a protective stop and a? Perfect. Yeah, this is an important thing. I think it's something that could help you, AB. So one of the things that I would do is figure out, like sometimes for my swing trades, I put a stop that's just like, let's say if I got in at 100, right? That was my entry, right? Well, I, I want to really risk down maybe towards 90. Well, I'm going to put a stop at like 80. That's what I call a protective stop. Doesn't really necessarily mean I wanted the stock to go down to 80, but if there's like a big whoosh down, it's going to protect me. It's going to get me right. out of the position. That's what you mean by a protective stop. So it's a Got stop it. that's so far out, you don't expect the price action to go to that. But if for any means something were to happen, then you recoup some of your trade instead of losing all of it. Yeah, exactly. I, I had some of those. I had I had some spy calls that I was up more than 100% on today. Uh, cause they were like zero date. They were expiring today. I bought them when the spy was in the red and then spy ripped up a little bit. So they're up hundred percent. So I put a stop loss like in the, like to where I still profited, but slightly, I made like 20 bucks on the trade, but now I'd be up 300 if I didn't take 20 bucks. And I <laughs> honestly, so it, you know, it's just silly there, but, um, all right, Mitch, I mean, I got to run, so I'll leave you to it, but uh, all right, no worries. I'll bring us, I'll bring us to the next video. I get AB out of here. Uh, check. Take a look, guys. Are you guys thinking about 23? Right now, starting up, don't miss it. Adam Johnson is going to give you guys stock market outlook from Central Park. Catch me, Money Mitch, Central Park, starting right now.